are welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications. ليه مستعجل؟ بعدي عن دربي أحلى ما فجر حالي فيكي ليه مستعجل؟ بدي فجر حالي بمبنى الشياطين أنت مين؟ أنا حورية حورية؟ إيه؟ عندك شاك؟ بس ليش أنت هون؟ مفروض تكوني ناطرتيني بالجنة من كتر محبت لقلكن وجعتولي قلبي رفقتك اللي سبقوك كتير عم بيعانوا تصور في واحد وصل لفوقهم قطشين إيدات نيناتن هيدا كيف بده يفك بعض لونه؟ ايه قلي كيف؟ عجا شو عم بمزح معك؟ فقررنا نحن الحوريات ننزل لهون واستأجرنا شقة لقدام شوي وجيت أنا نطرتك لأنه منعرف مين بده يفجر حاله وين قبل التفجير شو بدك مني أعمل؟ شيل عنك هالزنان ومشي معي لقدام شوي كل الحوريات ناطرينك بنعمل جلسة مساج وبعدين بنعمل جلسة أكل ثمار البحر وبعدين وبعدين بيجي السيد تمام وبيلقطك يا هبيلي <تصفيق> زبط زبط الكمين كمين؟ يعني إني أنت منك حورية؟ <تصفيق> حورية يا حوري أندبوري هيدي بالأمن معنا ميرسي زازا ليكي روحي على الهدف رقم اثنين في معلومات عن واحد انتحاري هبيلي مثل الاخ يمكن يهاجمه <تصفيق> بيزو زازا <مم> باي <تصفيق> ماشي قدامي ماشي قدامي يا حبيبي ماشي قدامي قلت لي بدك مساج <تصفيق> كيف هالمساج منيح هالمساج منيح هالمساج منيح هالمساج هنا مساج عطيس مساج عطيس يا هبيلي <تصفيق> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! This is the moment that you all have been waiting for. We are live! Live, live, live. You are listening to the live broadcast of your friendly neighbor, Stream Doctor and Christian Apologist. Apologist, apologist. The warrior for Christ, an enemy of Allah and his Rasul. This is your favorite YouTuber. Now, speaking from Cave Hira, 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 Hira. Rob Christian, 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 Christian. Please fasten your seatbelts. Houston, we are ready for takeoff. Off, off. We are back, baby. We are here. We are live. Let's go, baby. Welcome, everybody. What's up? What's up? Hey, Rob, you're overdoing it, man. Take it easy on the echoes, man. You're finished, Rob. <laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome. God bless you. Yeah, speaking from cave. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Let's go, baby. Hello, guys. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing okay. You're whole. You're safe and healthy. You and your loved ones. I hope you enjoyed the intro. Uh, a lot of people uh, <laughs> really... Uh, 
laughing about it. But hey, that's what the Muslims believe. When they go to Jannah, they will get uh, a lot of huris, brother. Allah will recycle them, especially for you, brother. Uh, certainly, Allah's Jannah is not uh, a whorehouse. It's not a red light district, right? And Allah uh, will certainly not enjoy the orgies that his jihadi boys will have in uh, in the Jannah of Allah. Everybody is going to be naked. It's not filthy. Uh, look at Muhammad's filth and idolatry. That's the topic of today, right? So, yeah, I mean... Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure after watching that small, short intro video, you are now convinced by now to take your shahada, not your shahata, because shahata in Arabic means slipper. I mean, uh, yeah. Your shahada, brother, you take your shahada and you bear witness that there is Allah and, uh, and uh, there is something called Jannah, who they call a whorehouse. I mean, you must be, you, you must be convinced by now that the Islam is the truth. Truly, Islam is not the cult. Of Satan that Satan created, I mean Allah, in disguise, uh, for uh, the jihadi boys to fight for him. To convince them, hey, if you die, fi sabil Allah and his Rasul, you will go to Jannah, brother. And you will get uh, uh, really big breasted women. And Allah will recycle them every time you deflower them. So Allah and his Jannah has a recycle business. Allah is doing business, man. Allah is a nice little pimp and he has a nice recycling business. Every time a jihadi in Jannah, a mujahid, brother, he deflowers a huri, Allah will recycle the huris and you will take uh, women, Christian women and Jewish women from, uh, from uh, Hellfire, brother, and he will recycle them. He will give them big boobs, brother. And uh, they, are, they are for jihadis, man. I mean, yeah, this is the truth. This is not uh, empty promises of Satan, brother. Islam is al-haq, brother. Deen al-haq. Hello, guys. Let me say hi to uh, everybody. Admins, keep our admins in your prayers, guys. Tony King, Dragon Daenerys. Hey, Tony, what's up, man? I made you an admin again. You keep losing your uh, account. Well... Seems that you're doing something great. Imagine if you don't get uh, deleted as a Christian. Sheikh Umut in the house. What's up, Sheikh? DJ Sheikh Umut. 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 Uh, do we have more? I think I saw Eden. Eden is in the house. Hello, Sister Eden. Uh, I think I saw also Phil Herrera, or maybe he will join later. I'm sure he will. We are blessed in the house. How are you? We are blessed. Long time no see. God bless you and your loved ones. Keep all the admins in your prayers, guys. Hello, Caleb Alvarez, son of John. Uh, I hope I did not forget one of the admins. George Lee, Roy Butong, Carolina Clark, John Doe, one of the Legerals. Welcome. Epi Franze, I think I saw. Hello. Uh, Babylon 13, John Wick, Zach Black, I think also a regular. I've seen his name before. Uh, Swai Sev. Welcome you too. I think I saw you too a couple of times. Dyson, also a regular. Welcome everybody. Uh, guys, sorry, I'm not going to mention all of your names, but you're all welcome here. Hey, Marian. How are you, Marian? You're all welcome here. God bless you, including the Muslims. We don't hate any Muslim. We only pity you that you believe in the empty promises of Satan, who is no one but Allah in disguise and his uh, fraud Prophet, his fraud Rasul Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. Yeah, welcome guys. <clears throat> As you know, before we start, we always start with a nice prayer. So I want to ask you to pray with me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray. My God. O oh my Lord, Jesus Christ, thank you for allowing us to do another live stream. Please bless our audience, all the admins here, our supporters on Patreon and subscribers. I want to ask you also to keep my wife and baby boy healthy and safe at all times. Please protect them and bless them, Father. And bless everybody who is here now and listening and watching to our very live stream. Please bless everybody here 
or their loved ones and families. Please also protect us and keep all of us healthy and safe, especially the ones who are risking their lives in doing ministry, trying to preach the truth and expose falsehood. Lord Christ, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslimin who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, we don't hate them. We actually love them. This is why we are doing this. We want as many people as possible saved through your holy blood. Please open their eyes, O Lord Christ, so also they can be saved through your holy blood, O Christ. Please, please, because we have hope for everybody. I believe, O Christ, that any Muslim who used to insult us, there is a small hope for such a person. Please open their eyes, Lord, please. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Christ, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today and guide me so I can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame because we are not ashamed about you. You claim to be Al-Haq, O Christ. You claim to be the truth. You are not ashamed to talk about you and preach about you, O Christ. Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In your holy name, O Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. We are live. 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 Speaking from Cave Hira. 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 We are live from Cave Hira with your favorite YouTuber, Rob Christian. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Nice to see you. Welcome on board to the new people who just joined. Maybe you have never seen uh, our live shows before. Welcome anyway. Even if you're a Muslim, we don't hate you. As you are commanded to hate us. Because everything Allah hates, you must hate too. Right, yeah, Muslimi? Truly, Islam is not a religion of hate. I mean, uh, it's not a religion of uh, filth. It's not a religion of big boobs and uh, eternal penises. And the Jannah of Allah. No, no, no. no. What are you talking about, Rob? Anyway. Now, let's see. Let me try to switch screens. And let us start. All right, all right. Today's today's topic: Muhammad's filth and idolatry. Muhammad's filth and idolatry. Uh, Rob, why are you using such a thumbnail, man? Get out of here, Rob. You're finished, Rob. Uh, are you scared of a uh, th thumbnail, guys? Come on. We are all grown-ups, right? If you're not a grown-up, uh, please, uh, <laughs> uh, this is an 18-plus uh, show today, okay? So we're going to take a what? When you do a deep dive, uh. I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. When you do a deep dive. Yeah, guys, things are going to be very awkward after taking a deep dive in the Islamic scriptures. Islamic sources, so watch out, guys. 18, 18 plus 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 today, okay? You're warned, so don't blame me, okay? Let us start, actually, guys. Muhammad's filth and idolatry. When we ask the Muslims, why do you pray towards the Kaaba? Why, why, oh, why do you pray towards the Kaaba? They will say, well, it's the house of Allah, brother. It's the house of our God, brother. We should pray, uh, fall on our faces and pray towards the Kaaba. But wait, are you saying that the Kaaba, inside the Kaaba, Allah lives there? Since you are saying he's, it's his house? No, 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 brother, no. Haram, brother. Akhi, haram, brother. Allah not, does not live in his house. Okay, why are you bowing towards an empty black box then? Why? Brother, what happened? I want an answer. No answer, brother. Well, brother, let me switch it up as a Mohammedan. Uh, well, the Jews, the Jews uh, uh, used to bow down towards the temple. But wait, ya Mohammedan. Wait, ya Muslimin. Ya Salaima. Wait. Ya Salami, wait. To where do you want to go? When Jews used to bow down towards the temple of Solomon, right? The temple of Solomon. 
we, according to the Bible, we Christians and Jews, we believe that God himself physically used to be inside the temple. He used to dwell in the tabernacle. So that argument of yours, always attacking the Jews, what else is new? Changing the topic and go after the Jews, <laughs> but what else is new? Right? So are you saying that Allah is inside the Kaaba? No, no, brother. But then why are you bringing up the Jews and why the Jews are bowing towards the temple? Oh, they used to bow up down towards the temple. They bow down to the Lord who used to dwell in a tabernacle inside the temple. So that argument won't work yeah, Muslimin. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> Nice try. Guys, I hope you took notes. Whenever they bring this up, when you ask them, why do you bow towards a black box? This is a black box. Nothing more, nothing less. Empty. Well, so why are you bowing down towards it? No answer, brother. No answer, brother. I mean, it's empty, so why would you do it? No answer. So the only conclusion we can take is that they are actually worshipping. They are worshipping the black box and the black stones. Couple of pebbles, couple of sm small tiny stones. They do worship it, but they are in denial and we all know better, right? We all know better. So Muslims are nothing but pagans, but they are in denial. Even the word Tawheed, even the word Tawheed that they love to brag about, it's oneness, brother. No, it does not mean oneness. Tawheed means unification. In Arabic, if you're an Arabic speaker, you should know what the meaning if, is of ana awahid. Here. Ana, let me type it out. Ana awahid in Arabic. That's the verb of Tawheed, noun. Ana awahid means I unify. You unify what then? Tawheed means unification. What are you unifying? Are you saying you are unifying Allah? You are unifying Muhammad? You are unifying the black stones and the black box, which, what you call uh, the Kaaba. All of those are the one God of Islam. So what? What? why are you talking about Tawheed? And isn't Tawheed the most important doctrine in Islam? Yes, brother. So who are you trying to unify? Any Muhammadan? Do we have any Muhammadan guys? No answer, brother. So they love to brag about the word Tawheed, but they don't tell you the true meaning of Tawheed. So in the end, it's nothing but a pagan cult. Take it or leave it. Do we have any Muhammadan guys? Do we have any guests? So that we can open Skype. Uh, admins, please uh, pay attention to the live chat. My live chat is in your hands. Keep the admins in your praise, guys. If there's a Mohammedan who would dare to call us live on air, please highlight my name. Tell me about it. All right. Good. Guys, make sure to invite and share the link to this show all over social media, guys. I hope we can get more numbers and uh, our shows and videos will reach many and many Muslims. All right. So. Are you saying, Rob, that Islam is nothing but a pagan cult? Yes. Muhammad, he wanted to show off. He said, uh, you know, let me tr uh, try to uh, destroy all the idols. Remember, the black box of Allah used to have at least 360 idols like these. right? For everything, they had an idol. An idol for fertility, like the black stones. Uh, an, an idol for this, an idol for that, an idol for that, for cursing, or whatever. All kind of idols you had, uh, all kind of statues, right? All kind of statues. Muhammad, when he went to Mecca with his army of thugs, when they conquered Mecca, he destroyed the idols of the Quraysh, right? The Quraysh, his own tribe, his own family, right? And they say... There is no compulsion in religion. Chapter 2, ayah 256. Brother, there is no compulsion in religion. There is no hate towards any uh, Christian, any Jew, any pagan. No, brother, no. You, you are allowed to, uh, to practice your own religion. Well, why did Muhammad then destroy the idols of Mecca? 
Brother, why did Muhammad destroy the idols of Mecca if there is no compulsion in religion? Oh, brother, it's an abrogated verse. Aha, uh-huh, so Allah changed his mind. Yes, brother, Allah can change his mind in Islam. Okay, thank you very much. That means Allah is nothing but a <clears throat> Muhammad. Muhammad and Allah are the same, and Islam is nothing but a pagan cult. Yes, brother. All right. To talk more about uh, the topic of idolatry, idolatry. When Muhammad was in the early beginnings, all right, as a so-called prophet, when he became a prophet, he received three chapters already, all right. For example, uh, the chapter, the very first chapter, where uh, Jibril starts to squeeze him in cave hira, squeezing him like a grape, right. <laughs> The, after three chapters, we get chapter 74. Remember, the Quran as we have it today is not in chronological order. So chapter 74, ayah 5, that you see here, is the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter. Chapter 74 is the fourth chapter chronological order, right? All right? So, Allah needs to remind Muhammad, the pagan idol worshiper Muhammad himself Allah says in the Quran to Muhammad stop worshiping idols ya Muhammad fahjur. Uh, you're lying Rob no I'm not lying here is the Quran <laughs> if we go to Surah Al-Muddathir again which is the fourth chapter chronological order Muhammad already received one two three chapters and this is the fourth so in the fourth chapter Allah needs to remind Muhammad to stop worshipping idols here. O oh, the cloaked one, meaning Muhammad. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Allah is saying to Muhammad. Oh, you oh the cloaked one. Oh, Muhammad, brother. This is Allah talking to Muhammad, right? Qum fa'anthir. Rise up and warn. Warabbaka fakabbir. And proclaim. Say takbir, brother. Say takbir. Right? And keep your clean, clothes clean, brother. Tell Aisha, tell your baby bride Aisha, brother, that you slip, <laughs> split in half. Tell her to scratch off the semen of your clothes. Brother, you don't know Arabic, brother. Oh, yeah, okay. So tell Aisha to scratch off with her fingernails the semen of your clothes. Let her clean your clothes. And stay away, Allah is saying to Muhammad, and stay away from idols. So here is the one million dollar question. Why Allah in chapter 74, which is the fourth chapter in Ayah 5, why Allah still needs to remind Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, you evil son of Satan, you idol worshiper Muhammad, why are you still worshiping idols? Stay away from idols. Right? Did we lie? No. Do you see how Allah needs to remind the pagan Muhammad still? I mean, he's already a prophet. He already received three different chapters. I demand an answer, ya Muslimin. Why Allah, after Muhammad receiving three different chapters, why Allah needs to remind Muhammad, stop worshipping idols, ya Muhammad. And Muslims love to tell you, Muhammad never committed shirk, brother. Muhammad never committed idolatry. They are right. Muhammad was an idol worshiper before Islam and still being <laughs> after becoming a Muslim, after receiving Quran, he's still worshiping idols. Oh boy. Oh boy. Why, oh why is Muhammad worshiping idols? Why is he still a pagan? Don't you Muslims always brag about Islam is oneness, brother. Islam is all about oneness. What oneness? Your prophet, your own prophet. The best example, the pattern of conduct that you follow, the best example of mankind is worshipping idols after becoming a prophet and receiving Quran. Wow. Where are the Muslims who claim that Muhammad was never a pagan? Wow. You see? This is Quran. Is this da'if? Maybe the ayah is da'if, guys. Allahu a'lam. Maybe the ayah is da'if. Should we remove this ayah from the Quran and stay away from idols? Brother Rob Christian, brother, 
is uh, false translation, brother. Are you sure? Guys, <laughs> false translation. <laughs> Chapter 74, ayah 5. This is a tabari tafsir. Tafsir al tabari in Arabic. Sorry, guys, I don't have the English translation. Tafsir al tabari. Tafsir al tabari. For the same chapter, same ayah. Okay? Tafsir al tabari, chapter 74, Surah al Muddathir, ayah 5. If we scroll down, all the way down, on page 4, let me give you the link, guys, by the way. Let me give you the link. You can use Google Translate for. Uh, here, look what it says. The meaning of the words. What does that mean? It means the following. This is Tafsir al Tabari, same Tafsir. This is the translation that I could provide for you. Meaning, you, Muhammad, stop worshipping idols and stop giving service to these idols. Rob Christian, you're still lying. Are you sure? Let us copy this and go to Google Translate. Is that a good uh, good deal, guys? Here's the deal, all right? Let us put it here. And look what it says. Meaning, and idols, so abandon their worship, ya Muhammad, and abandon their service. Did we lie to you? No. Did we lie to you? No. Even at tabari the creme de la creme, the tafsir daddy of all times. Remember, at tabari is creme de la creme, the number one tafsir daddy, right? Muslims can't, can't call him a liar. He also confirms that it means idol worship of Muhammad. And uh, Muhammad, Allah is commanding Muhammad to stop worshipping idols. Idols? You see it? Idols. And uh, stop giving the service for of the idols. Did we lie to you? Any Muhammadan who dares to call me a liar? Brother, brother, sorry brother, yes, Muhammad was a pagan while being a prophet. <laughs> yes, brother, because Muhammad was worshipping idols. And Allah needs to kick out Jibreel, sent him to Muhammad. Ya Muhammad, stop worshipping idols. Ya Muhammad, stop worshipping idols. You're already a prophet of Islam. You're the final prophet. You're the seal of all the prophets, brother. Stop worshipping idols. Oh man, I hope, guys, I hope you can take notes. We, I gave you the link to the tafsir. Let me give you the link to the ayah. All right. And this is the translation of Ahmad Reza Khan. You see it? Ahmad Reza Khan. And stay away from idols. At least Ahmad Reza Khan in this ayah, he is not lying about the ar-ruts. ar-ruts fahjur. That's the meaning of it, right? Take a screenshot, guys. Take a screenshot if you like, if you want to talk about paganism in Islam. Muhammad, after receiving three different chapters, in the fourth chapter, he is still worshipping idols. And Allah needs to remind him, Ya Muhammad, stop worshipping idols and stop giving service to these idols. Guys, do you have any idea how damaging this is? Do you have any idea how... Chapter 74, Ayah 5, how it destroys Muhammad's credibilities as the so-called prophet of oneness, of Tawheed. They call, claim that Tawheed means oneness, which is not. Totally not. Do you have any idea how damaging this is, guys? This very Ayah. So I don't understand why Christians don't talk about this more often. I hope uh, that people like Christian Prince, uh, people like Sam Shamoon and so on, uh, Sister Hatun, Brother David Wood, why they don't bring this ayah often. I never seen uh, these people talk about. Yes, I know that a Christian prince loved to talk about chapter 93, ayah 7, that Muhammad, when he was in, his, in, in the first 40 years of his life, that he was actually worshipping idols. We already know that. Muhammad was a pagan from the start. His Quraysh tribe were pagans. So what can you expect? But what about this very ayah? This is such a damaging ayah, guys. You have no idea. This destroys Islam. They can't say this is da'if. This is Quran. <laughs> Guys, please take notes. And at least take a selfie or a screenshot, whatever you want to call it. This ayah destroys Islam and Muhammad. It's Quran, right? And if that's not enough, if that's not enough, here is Musnad Abi Hanifa, which makes it even more worse and confirms that Muhammad was a worshipper of idols. Even while 
He was a prophet. Look. Uh, we find this hadith in Musnad Abi Hanifa on, on his book, in Musnad Abi Hanifa on in the Arabic book on page 589. This is the Arabic, right? And this is my translation, page 589. Kitab al-Libas was zina, zina, right? On page 50, 589, we can read, that there was a curtain wall in the house of Rasulullah, right? In the house of Rasulullah, a curtain wall, which there was in statues. <laughs> what are statues, what are idols doing in the house of Muhammad, ya Muslimin? You always claim that Muhammad never worshipped idols. He was not a pagan, even before Islam and after Islam. So what are idols, what are statues doing in the house of the Rasul of Allah? Isn't that shirk? Isn't that idolatry? So look what the reason is of Jibreel staying away for a while. So Jibreel stayed away for a while. Why? Then he came to him. Does that, that make sense? Why would you stay for a while away? And still come after, uh, to the house of Muhammad anyway. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, this is Islam. Messed up. So he, Muhammad, said to Jibreel, Look guys, what made you, Jibreel, stay away from me? Why didn't you visit me, O Jibreel? He, Jibreel, said, We do not enter a house where dogs and statues are in. So Jibreel forced Muhammad to cut off the heads of these statues inside the house of Muhammad. Waqta ru'us al-tamathil in the Arabic. Waqta ru'us al-tamathil. Cut off their heads. Decapitate the heads of these statues. Jibril is forcing Muhammad to do so. Else I'm not going to visit you anymore. Else I'm not going to come and bring you Quran. Ya Muhammad, Jibril is saying. So, uh, Jibreel is afraid of uh, tiny chihuahuas, brother, and idols inside the house of Muhammad. Uh, guys, there's a uh, sugar-coated version. I like to call it a sugar-coated version on sunnah.com of this hadith. Uh, you have many versions for this hadith, but this is the most damaging one that you won't find translated. So, I had to translate it for you. If you go to sunnah.com, you will only see uh, hadith talking about the dogs. And you Christians... Guys, listen carefully, please. I love you, but let me help. Help me to help you. You love to bring up, yeah, Jibril is. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, you love to, to, to laugh about Jibril, the, the the scary Jibril, yeah, scared Jibril. He is scared of dogs. But my friends, there are many other books that are Sunnah, and this is hadith. This hadith is not daif. It's Sahih, right? This hadith is Sahih. This is Musnad Abi Hanifa. Guys, do you have any idea who Musnad Abi Hanifa is? He's of the Hanafi. He's the one of the founders of the four schools, which is the Hanafi school of thought, right? You have the Hanafi, the Hanbali, and so on, right? Four schools. Shafi'i and so on. Hanbali. This is the guy. They can't, they can't call him a liar. This is his book. So take a screenshot, guys, because you won't find this hadith on sunnah.com. Right? Sunnah.com. You won't find it. All right? So, do you see, can we conclude that Muhammad was nothing but a mushrik, son of a mushrik? He was a nice little pagan worshipping idols. Right? Muhammad loved to worship idols. And even Allah in the Quran needs to tell him, Ya Muhammad, stay away from worshipping idols. Stop worshipping idols. Oh boy. And Muslims love to tell you, no, no, Muhammad never worship idols. But it's in your Quran, you idiots. It's in the Quran. Allah is commanding Muhammad after receiving three different chapters of the Quran. Allah is still reminding Muhammad and stay away from idols, Ya Muhammad. Why? Because Muhammad is a nice little pagan. Musnad Abi Hanifa, Musnad Abi Hanifa, my friends. Musnad Abi Hanifa, on, in his book called Musnad Abi Hanifa, right? This is Abu Hanifa in his book called Musnad Abi Hanifa, page 589. Take a screenshot. Here, 589, 589. 
We, uh, we even have the chapter, right? The book of uh, the clothing and uh, how you, uh, you know, make yourself, let's say, pretty or, you know, dress up or whatever you want to call it, right? You see? Now, if this is not enough, let us go to the second topic. Are you ready, guys? I hope I'm not putting you asleep. What about lies? I mean, Muslims always love to tell you, Muhammad was not filthy, brother. Muhammad was just clean. He's the best example, brother. Muhammad, you know, when you see him, you, you smell musk. You smell, you smell of, uh, the best smell, brother. He, he, Muhammad was very clean, brother. But are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Muhammad was not as clean as you think. And remember, it's all over, all over the sunnah. Look. Narrated Anas bin Malik. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2788. Let me give you the link, guys. Look. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Anas bin Malik. Allah's messenger used to visit Umm Haram. So he used to visit a woman called Umm Haram. All right? Who would offer him meals. So Muhammad used to go to a woman for food, brother. Um Haram was the wife of Ubada bin As-Samit. Allah's messenger once visited her and she provided him with food and started looking for <laughs> Um Haram. Guys, Um Haram was investigating the head of uh, Rasulullah, brother, for lies. Uh, brother, when you get lies in your head, right? A louse or lies in your head. Isn't that uh, basically, uh, can we conclude that Muhammad was a filthy, dirty man? He did not wash himself enough? If you are a filthy man, you are constantly covered in sweat. You don't bath enough. You don't clean yourself enough. Product of that, right? The reaction of that is that you're going, uh, sooner or later, you're going to get lice in your hair, in your head. Maybe also in your private uh, area, right? If you you know what I mean. Or, or everywhere where you have hair on your body. Yeah, Muslimin, stop lying to us that your prophet was a clean, the cleanest. In, I mean, if you find an Arabic dictionary and you look for the name of Muhammad, you will find the, the synonym for the, <laughs> for the name of Muhammad is cleanest. Pure, Muhammad is pure, brother. But he did have lice in his hair. Muhammad had lies in his hair. I mean, yeah, Muhammad was clearly not filthy, right? Wow. If this is not enough, it's everywhere. We can find all over the sunnah that Zainab used to uh, uh, investigate the head of Muhammad for lies. We have many. Um Salama, all of, a lot of women used to look at it. Look. Zainab was picking lies from the head of the Prophet. Let me give you this article that I found, guys, on the internet. All right? It's a really lengthy article. Someone did some investigation and he collected all the information about the lies in the head of Muhammad. Zainab was looking. Um Salama was looking. Um Haram was looking. Look, this is Sunan Abi Daud. The other one was Sahih al Bukhari. All right, let me give you the link again. Bookmark it, save it, guys, whatever you want to do. So Muhammad had, uh, here, Um Salama was picking lies from the head of the Prophet. Look how many women, different women. Every time Muhammad was here, the same year, remember? The aunt of Anas and Um Haram were picking the lies from the head of the Prophet. Muhammad was really filthy, disgusting, man. So Allah, why Allah did not send Jibreel to protect Muhammad from the lies in his head? And they love to lie to you. How many uh, Muslims know about this, guys? How many Muslims know that Muhammad had lies in his hair? Someone is saying, poor lies to be infested by Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I didn't think about that one. That's a good one, man. <laughs> Do we have any Mohammedan guys? We have at least two dislikes. That's a good one. You're killing me, man. <laughs> yeah, 
Is there any Mohammedan who would dare to call us live on air? Please, please make my day. Let us see if you can defend your prophet. Brother, the moment we shut down, we close our live show, Muslims will come to our comment section and spam, you're lying, Rob. You're a jahil. You don't know what you're talking about, Rob Christian. Uh, you are finished, Rob. Yeah. Why are you not calling me? Why are you such cowards? That's the right name for you. Why the ummah has become so soft that the Muslim mujahideen, right? These jihadi boys are only becoming text terrorists. They don't dare to call because they know what will happen to them, right? Abel A is saying, will you talk about the Taliban's future? For, uh, well, I, Abel A, to be honest with you, I don't like to talk about politics and... Uh, and, 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 you know, I look at Afghanistan. They're nothing but, uh, you know, these Taliban boys, these jihadis are the true Muslims. Not these Muslims here in the West like Muhammad Hijab and uh, Ali Drama and uh, uh, Sister Fifi. All, all uh, munafiqun, man. If you are truly a Muslim, you should go buy yourself a plane ticket, go to Afghanistan and commit, do, do jihad, brother. Fi sabil Muhammad and Allah. Do jihad. That's a true Muhammadan should do. A true Muhammadan fighting is subscribed on him according to the Quran, according to the Sunnah. Every scholar will tell you fighting is a must in Islam. Islam is created to conquer as many countries as possible. Muhammad ordered his men to do that, and that's what they did. Right? Conquest, fighting, uh, getting sex slaves, sex booty, right? Sex slaves, they call it war booties, right? Look, in Afghanistan, they uh, go and collect all the girls and slave them as sex slaves, right? And uh, the poor parents cannot do anything. And these are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, Muslims will say, oh, the Taliban are not real Muslims, but here Muslims in the West, these embarrassed wannabe Muslims here in the West, the closet Muslims, Right, the sugar-coated version of Muslims here in the West, they will say, brother, Taliban, Bin Laden, Taliban, and so on, they are not Muslims. ISIS are not Muslims, brother. No, 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 no. But uh, they don't forget uh, to tell you that Muhammad said, anyone who is a munafiq, right, they are considering them as munafiq, hypocrite, you're allowed to kill such a person and uh, enslave uh, his children and take uh, the women and uh, girls as sex slaves. It's allowed. That's why they are doing this. This is why now the Taliban, they are getting, uh, being the upper hand, right? This is why they are going from house to house, collect the girls for sex slaves, buy and sell them to each other, right? So th the true Muslims are not these people here in the West who are doing dawah on the streets and uh, uh, go to speak his country. These are munafiqun, man. You're, you're, you're a miskeen. You're not a true Muslim. You don't want to be Muslim. A true Muslim buys himself a, uh, a plane ticket and goes fight and help his brother out in Afghanistan. Fight for Allah and his messenger, brother. That is the true Islam. But yeah. This is Islam, guys. What can we do? Someone wants to debate me? Who's that? Let me open Skype. Guys, again, no Christians, only Muslims. What did I do? Uh, let me open Skype. We have a Mohammedan? Uh, where's the Mohammedan? My Skype is open. Any Mohammedan? Yalla ya salami, wainak ya salami. Where are you? Brada, I'm waiting. Where's the guy who wanted to call me? What's his name? Call me, man. My Skype is open. Is this uh, Muhammad? Let's see. Maybe we can call him back. Let's see. Who is this guy? I hope he's a Muslim. Oh, it's Allah? <laughs> Pick up the phone, brother. My dad isn't here now. He's going to come. Gonna what? Later. What? 
My dad. Okay, okay. Let your let your dad call me. Uh, what the heck was that? <laughs> His name is combating disbelief. He called me. This guy that I just called. Hmm. Call me, call me, buddy. When you're back, call me. I don't want to. I don't want your kid on my live show. <laughs> what the heck? Was that his wife? His kid? I don't know. I think it was a kid. It's not. Mm. Yes, hello? 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 Why would the guy call himself a Syrian man call me? What's wrong with you? You want to you want me to block you guys? Hello? Are you Muslim? That's that's daddy. Uh, ultimate donkey, yeah, ultimate donkey. I knew it. I knew it. I have my own personal stalker, guys. I wanna be Muslim, not true Muslim. I have I have no time for uh, ultimate donkey. Yeah, he, he he loves to stalk me. He loves to stalk Christian Prince. He loves to stalk Sam Shimon. Uh, we are tired of this kid. You know, sometimes it's enough to spank the same guy over and over. I had many debates with him, and uh, he's a Rashad Khalifa boy. His master, he was killed in the nineties. Yeah, Muslims, Sunni Muslims killed his master, and this guy he has even a different version of the Quran. His Quran in chapter 9, I 128, 129 is removed. So he's not even a real Muslim. If this guy goes to uh, Mecca or Medina, they will kill him. They will butcher him. What about the Taliban if he goes to Afghanistan? Brother, look at my false version of the Quran, brother. Uh, two ayahs are at least missing to make the miracle number 19 work. <laughs> miracle number 19, brother. If you don't remove the last two ayahs of chapter 9, Surah at tawbah the medical 19 won't work, brother. Uh, so that's why they killed Rashad Khalifa? Yes, brother. One of the reasons. And he believes, yeah, he can't live without me. I, uh, you know, we are living rent-free in their minds. So what do you expect? Of course they're going to stalk us day, day and night. Now, guys, about the lies of Muhammad. Look, in, I think in the last part of the article that I gave you, let me give you the, the article once more. Just a second. Let me give you the link. Look what it says. Some people concluded that the death of Muhammad... Guys, focus again. Please, focus. Forget about the ultimate donkey and uh, these silly kids. Some people concluded that the death of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, was the result of typhus fever in addition to the impact of the poison that was in the shoulder of the sheep he ate at Khaybar. Remember when Muhammad conquered Khaybar? You know the story, right? A Jewish woman prepared food. Uh, Muhammad, he's very smart, brother. The prophet of Islam, brother, he's a genius. He did not think, hey, if this Jewish woman, I just killed her uh, husband, I killed her father, I killed her brothers, I killed her uncles. I mean, Muhammad is a genius. He did not know that she is going to poison him, put poison in the food. And remember when Bishr, one of the Sahaba, when Bishr ate from the food, he fell immediately down and he, and he died. Because he ate a lot of uh, amount of the poisonous food. Muhammad only ate a small part, right? And later they had to even drag Muhammad uh, uh, with his feet all, uh, every time on the floor. Because, uh, you know, the effect, it took some time for the effect of the poison to kill him, right? Because he did not eat enough like uh, Bishr did. Bishr is one of the Sahaba who died after eating a large amount of the poisonous food in Khaybar. So, according... According to the hadith, right? According to the hadith, Muhammad said in Sahih al-Bukhari, you see, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 4428, narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died, used to say, Oh Aisha, oh Aisha, oh my baby bride Aisha, Habibi Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food, the poisoned food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from the poison. Guys, there is nothing called as if in the Arabic. Because the Arabic says, There is nothing called as if. 
So Muhammad is saying, I found that my aorta is being cut from the poison. So they added as if to sugarcoat the lie, right? To lie, to sugarcoat as if, brother. Muhammad is saying as if. No, it doesn't say as if. I feel my aorta is being cut from the poison. That's what Muhammad is saying, right? وَجَدْتُ أَنْ قَطْعَ أَبْهَرِي مِنْ ذَلِكَ السَّمْ This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 44, 28. Right? 44, 28. Let me give you the link. All right? So that's what it's referring you to. And look what Muhammad said when he is on deathbed. On his deathbed, Muhammad said, some of us, now guys, Muhammad is going to lie about the true prophets because he claims to be a prophet. So he needs to lie because he's a fraud. Some of us, prophets like Musa, prophets like Isa, pro prophets like uh, all the prophets, are afflicted with the lies. Lies? Yes, lies, brother. Until they kill them. So the, according to Muhammad, a lot of prophets, even Muhammad, ha has lies in their hair, have lies in their hair, and we can find it in Musnad Ahmad, in the Arabic book, Musnad Ahmad, hadith number 11,383. Sahih. Muhammad, according to the Prophet of Islam, the prophets are afflicted with lies until they kill him. Because uh, <laughs> there could be a reason that someone uh, approached Muhammad and said, hey, Muhammad, you claim to be the final prophet. You, became to, uh, you claim to be the best of creation. You claim to be the best example. Why do you have lies in your hair? Brother, my answer for that is, some of us, the prophets, are afflicted with lies until they kill them. So he's basically saying, you know, we prophets have a really harsh life. We, uh, we are really disgusting. We are dirty. So Muhammad is claiming that uh, a prophet like Moses had a lies in his hair. You filthy liar. You fraud. Show me from the Bible. Show me from the Hebrew Bible where we can find that Moses or Abraham, uh, any, any, any prophet had lies in his hair. Can you show me one verse? Here's the challenge, ya Muhammadans, ya Muslimin. Show me from the Bible where we can find that any prophet in the Hebrew Bible had lies in his hair. Show me one verse. One verse to confirm that Muhammad is not lying. You see, this very hadith that is sahih destroys Muhammad again because he is lying about the prophets. Because he has lies, so he must lie and say, you know, Moses had lies, Abraham had lies. What a disgusting lying prophet. It's Haq Ibrahim, you have no honor, you have no dignity. Sit down. I don't, I don't, I, you're, you're nothing but a munafiq. Okay? You're a munafiq, you have no dignity, you have no honor. You know why it's Haq Ibrahim? You are, you are a black man, while your fake prophet, right? Your fake prophet enslaved black people, he raped women like your mother, if you have a black, black mother, he raped them, he sold them, right? And he bought slaves. He owned slaves and he bought slaves. All right? Yeah, someone like Bilal. Bilal stayed a slave. Even after the death of Muhammad, Bilal is still a slave, a black slave. And he asked, after the death of Muhammad, after the cursed death of Muhammad, who died because of poison, he asked Abu Bakr, right? Abu Bakr, who became the first caliph, please free me. I'm a Muslim. Why am I still a slave? <laughs> the poor, poor Bilal. Yeah. Poor Bilal. Muhammad used to force uh, Bilal to do uh, the adhan because no one else would, uh, would have done it. Well, I mean, uh, why would a Muslim who's not a slave do the adhan? Right? Hey, Allah, salah. You know, when they call for prayer. A black man <laughs> had to do it because no other Muslim would care in the time of Muhammad to do it. Let the slave do it, brother. Poor Bilal. Yeah. Many, many. Muhammad was a slave master. And you, saw, you see this guy? This uh, is Haq Ibrahim. He has no honor. He has no dignity. He's a black dude who believes that Muhammad is a prophet. Well, Muhammad owned slaves like you. Well, it's Haq Ibrahim. You're a Muslim, aren't you? You're nothing but a coward who doesn't even dare to say, I'm a Muslim. You're, you're a coward, man. You're too afraid, you're too embarrassed to say, I'm a Muslim. Coward, sit down. Sit down. I've seen your comment before. 
So again, do you see how Muhammad lied about the prophets? Muhammad lying from the back of his teeth. What else is new? Right? And to make it even more worse for Muhammad, if we go to the Quran, guys, let me make this a little bit smaller. If we go to the Quran, chapter 69, Surah Al Haqqaq, ayahs 44 to 46. Guys, pay f attention, focus with me. Let me give you the link. Look what it says. ولو تقول علينا ببعض الأقاويل لأخذنا منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين. What does that mean? And if Muhammad had made up about us some false saying, if Muhammad, according to Allah, Allah is the one talking, right? If Muhammad, if Muhammad would have fabricated ayahs or lied about Allah, Allah would grab him by the right hand. لَأَخَدْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ Allah is saying we would have seized him by the right hand. Then we would have caught from him the aorta. ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ So according to Allah, and guys I don't believe there's something called Allah. But look at the irony. Look at the irony. It seems that Allah is the one who cut off the aorta of Muhammad. I feel. My aorta is being cut from the poison. Guys, again, there's nothing called as if in the Arabic. They need to lie in the translation. What else is new? One plus one. So who killed uh, Muhammad? The irony. Allah killed Muhammad for his lies and fabrication. Because, you see, one of the reasons here is Muhammad lied about the prophets, for example. He claims that people like Moses, like Abraham, had lies. Do you see it? It's in front of you. Again, let me give you this article. This hadith we can find in Musnad Ahmad, hadith number 11,483. Sahih. Right? Musnad Ahmad. Ahmad ibn Hamal, the, the, uh, the school of thought, right? That the Salafi Muslims follow. People like Farida, people like Ali Drama, people like uh, Muhammad Hijab, uh, uh, Ibn Fibin. All of these people follow the Hanbali sect, right? They are Salafis. You see it? You see it? So Allah killed Muhammad? Yes. One plus one. If Muhammad is claiming that his aorta is being cut off, and we had confirmed already that he lied, uh, that means, all right, Allah is saying Muhammad is a fabricator, I will cut off his aorta. One plus one. One plus one. There you go. So who called Muhammad? Allah. Even Allah was tired of Muhammad, guys. Can you imagine? Even Allah was tired of the lies and fabrications of the fraud prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Oh boy. Let us continue with the filth of Islam. I know, guys. I know you like this topic. The written prophet of Islam. Any Muhammadan? <laughs> Any Muhammadan? Any Muhammad who is watching, why did naked people ride Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah is praying on him. Al-Rasul al-Markub. Guys, that means the written prophet in Arabic. Al-Rasul al-Markub. Irkab, irkab, ya mahbub. Rasulullah eyes ya too, brother. Keep riding Muhammad because Muhammad wants, uh, you know, What's the, the right word for Yatub? You know, he wants to repent. Yeah, repent. Irkab, irkab, ya mahboob. Irkab, irkab, eyes. Muhammad, eyes Yatub. Any Muhammadan? My Skype is open, man. Any Muhammadan? Before we continue? Yeah, so again, the final question is, one of the million dollar questions in Islam is why did naked people ride Rasulullah? Naked people riding Rasulullah until sunrise? No way. Yes way. Let me give you the article, guys, because this hadith that we are going to read for you, this is the only translation that I found on the internet. So bookmark it, save it. Because Muslims won't dare to translate such hadiths about their Rasul. The hadiths that are too embarrassing, you won't find it translated. 
right? In Musnad Ahmad, we find the following hadith. And of course, it's very, very sahih, brother. It's not da'if, it's sahih. And I'm going to prove it. In Musnad Ahmad, for example, there are many books. We find the following hadith reported by such and such, such, and, 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 from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Now, guys, who is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? For the people who are listening, if you have paying attention to our many live shows and videos, can you tell me who Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is? Anyone in the live chat? Can you tell me who Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is? Anyone can tell me in the live chat who Abdullah bin Mas'ud is? He is one of the guys who used to write Quran. And not only that, he was the number one guy to go to, according to Muhammad. Remember, Muhammad said, go to four people. One of them was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He started with him. Another guy was Ubay ibn Kaab. If you want to learn the Quran, go to four. Right? I mentioned two of them. You can find that hadith on Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? Muhammad said, go to four. So he was a Quran writer and he knew the Quran inside out. Ishaq Ibrahim, don't you dare to talking about cursing, okay? Your filthy prophet, your filthy prophet taught you to curse Christians every day. At least 17 times. Look. When you pray your five daily prayers, you curse us left and right. You repeat the curses of Allah. This is your uh, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, right? The path of those you have favored, not the path of those who earned your anger. Those are the Jews. Nor of those who are astray, the Christians. So you are repeating the curses that Allah brought on the Jews and the Christians. How dare you? You evil son of Satan, how dare you to talk about cursing? Okay, you repeat the curses of Allah in your five daily prayers. How dare you to bring up cursing? You coward, you hypocrite. Call me you little coward so that I can embarrass your prophet life on air. Would you dare to call me or are you going to cry in my live chat? You filthy son of Satan. But I know, guys, I think it's uh, Ultimate Shirk. If I'm not mistaken. He has many uh, nicknames. I think it's Ultimate Shirk. He's many nicknames, guys. I think it's him. But what else is new? I have my own personal stalkers everywhere. So don't even dare to bring up cursing, okay? So guys, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, let us go back. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is one of the four that Muhammad told you to go to as a Muslim regarding the recitation of the Quran. Yeah, guys, we live rent-free in the minds of the Muhammadans. So what can we do? So of course they're going. They need to stalk us, and uh, because you know they think about me every night and every morning, right? We are living rent free in their minds, right? Yeah, Mohammedans, keep crying in my chat. Keep crying in my comment section. You are nothing but my personal dhimmi. Deal with it. Look what he said. Look what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, guys. Let us focus. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted me to join him. So we went on our way until we came to a place called Kaza wa Kaza. Meaning to a such and such place. The words Kaza and Kaza means such and such. Right? Kaza wa Kaza. Meaning he refused to mention the name of the place. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the place is unknown. So he planned. Muhammad planned for that. I should stay a little behind. So Muhammad ordered Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, guys, to stay behind and keep a distance from that place that Muhammad was about to enter. Keep a distance, oh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Muhammad is saying, stay away, brother, don't come any closer. As if I did not, I will be killed. So if, if, I, won't, if I won't listen to Muhammad and I will continue walking to that place that Muhammad was going to, I will die. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is confirming, right? That's what he's saying. And that's exactly what I did. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, one of the Sahabis of Muhammad, he stayed behind. One of the companions stayed behind. Then Rasulullah Muhammad went ahead and had a small distance. And he, Muhammad, mentioned that. Now here comes the Jews, guys. 
Here comes the meat. Are you ready? I hope you are ready. There are a group of people. <laughs> there are a group of people. And then Afan confirmed the following description of those people. The Zut. If we go to the Arabic, uh, those people are gold. Are called what? The Zut. Zut means black Indian looking people, right? Basically. There are black people, but they are not really uh, looking like black people from India. More like, uh, sorry, from Africa. More like Indian black kind of people. Right? Those are called the Zot. They came. What did they do? And they are naked. They are naked. And you cannot see their genitals. But they are naked, brother. Naked people came. And then what did they do? According to Abdullah. Abdullah said. They came and kept riding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and Muhammad kept reading over them the Quran. What? Irkab, irkab, ya mahboob. Irkab, irkab. Rasulullah is YouTube. Brother, keep riding, brother. Keep riding Rasulullah all night long, all night long. <laughs> Keep riding, brother. Keep riding. Keep, keep, keep riding. <laughs> keep riding. That's what. <laughs> now here is the one million dollar question, ya Muslimi. Why are naked people riding your Rasul Allah the whole night until sunshine? Why is that? Look, it says. Look what it says. Then Abdullah continues to say. Them also came to me and rotate around me and stay in my way. So I was so terrified, Abdullah is saying, that them, so I sat down until the first light of sunrise when they left. That's a bit, you know, I think this is a Google Translate or something. But you get the idea. Then Rasulullah came f feeling heaviness and pain. Why is Muhammad having pain? Well, because obviously those naked black Indian lookalike people raped Rasulullah. That's why he is having pain. Muhammad is saying, I am having pain. Because they were riding him. Oh boy. The raped prophet of Islam, brother. Pain where? It must be his buttocks, right? I mean, they raped him. Naked people are riding him. And why are naked people riding Rasulullah? But the people who will say, dare to say, brother, this is life. No, it's, it's sahih. Chain of narration is sahih. Right? The same hadith you can find in the Turmuzi. Many, many. Look. Look what it says here in the Arabic. Isnado sahih. You see it? Isnado sahih means it's very, very authentic hadith. Naked people riding Rasulullah, the written prophet of Islam. Rasul al Merkub. Irkab, irkab, ya mahboob. Irkab, irkab. Rasulullah, I see you too, brother. Muhammad wants to repent, so keep riding him, brother. Yeah. And guys, this is not the only place that we can find this hadith. Look, here is a book by Al Darqutni. The writer of this book called Al Darqutni, very big imam in Islam, in his Atraf al Gharaib wa al Afrad min Hadith Rasulullah, Volume 4. In this book, this is the book, right, guys? This is a physical book. This is the cover. If you go to page 100, look, page 100, the dots in Arabic, guys, are zeros. So, page 100, we scroll down. Same Hadith, right? Az Zut. Yeah, you see, the, the, if you know Arabic, you can find it. This is the same Hadith. That we read for you in the translation. Here it says, Isnadahu Sahih. Chain of narration is Sahih. What? Brother, it's Sahih? Yes, brother. The Zut are writing Rasulullah? Yes, brother. So, this is the, again, this is the title of the book, and this is the Imam who wrote this book, Volume 4. We can also find it in Ibn Kathir. Ibn, the Ibn Kathir. Yeah, that guy who, who, gave, in his, who gave the tafsir for the Quran. That Ibn Kathir. In his book called Jam al-Masanid was Sunan in volume 26. Volume 26 by Ibn Kathir. On page 7526. 
page 7,000 in Arabic, 526. We scroll down, we can see Azot here in the Arabic, they are like the Azot, they are Indian black people. Indian naked black people riding Rasulullah. We scroll down, we see chain is not of narration sahih. Wa is not of sahih. In the footnote, guys, this is the footnote of the page. The isnad, the isnad, the chain is sahih. Any Muhammadan who dare to say it's daif, I challenge you to, to, to lie to us, to lie in my face on my live show. Call me so I can embarrass you and your prophet. Oh, it's not daif. Shame on you for lying. Here in Majma' al-Zawaid, Wa al-Fawaid, in again the book called Majma' al-Zawaid, Wa al-Fawaid, volume 8, by Imam al-Hafiz. Hafiz means someone who actually memorized the Quran. Hafiz, someone who memorized the Quran. Al-Haythami, a giant also, a giant scholar in Islam. In his book, in volume 8, and we go to page 334, 334 in the Arabic, we scroll down. And the men in the chain are the men of a sahih, like in Bukhari and Muslim. So the people in the chain of narration, in the isnad, the chain, the isnad, the people in there are of a sahih. Sahih hadith, brother. So why, again, why or oh why is Muhammad being ridden like a donkey, like a bicycle by naked Indian lookalike men called the Zut? A link, here's the link again. Scroll down, guys, in the basically last part of the page. You will find this hadith. And here is the translation, right? This is not my translation, but it's a you know, close translation, you can say. Naked people riding Rasulullah until the sunrise. So go to that part, all right? And there are many stories, Muhammad kissing the people... Uh, you know, men on their side. Muhammad had many bisexual encounters with men. And this is one of them. This is only one example. There are many. People riding Rasulullah from the back. Muhammad riding uh, people from the back. Kissing their bellies and kissing their naked side. Muhammad loved men and women. He was a bisexual. Yes, un until sunrise. Look, it says until sunrise. All right? So they kept riding him the whole night, all night long, all night long. I mean, Lion Richie would be proud. Lion Richie would be proud. And we showed you, right, from Ibn Kathir, we showed you from at least three different sources that the chain is sahih. Chain is sahih. Ibn Kathir's book, right? Ibn Kathir, Jam al Masanid was Sunan by Ibn Kathir, volume 26. Sahih. So again, why naked people are riding Rasulullah, ya Muslim? I demand an answer for my question. And why you Muslims are too embarrassed to translate it? Why do Christians like me need to translate or give translation? Why? Why are you too embarrassed that your prophet was raped by Indian lookalike naked people? Riding him all night long. Why are you too embarrassed to mention this in your translations? Because more than 80% of the Muslim population on this planet, they don't know Arabic. They can read Arabic and understand Arabic. So why are you Arabic-speaking Muslims? Why are you not translating these books? So that the Muslims on this planet know that Muhammad was ridden like a donkey. They used to ride Muhammad like a donkey. Like a bicycle, brother. All right. Yeah, G Gerard Bota, exactly. Could be. I think Muhammad, I truly, if we have to take a conclusion, reading after those hadiths, we have to conclude that Muhammad was a bisexual. Yes, you heard it correctly. We have to conclude that. Muhammad had many sexual activities with men too, not only women. All right. Let us go to another topic, guys. You know? Let us talk about more filth of Muhammad and his Allah, the pimp of pimps, Allah himself. But we know there's nothing called Allah. It's Muhammad fabricating all of these. Right? All of these stories in the Quran and so on and so on. Let us talk about the Muslim women, the queens of Jannah, brother. Let's say uh, people like Ishaq Ibrahim, that uh, hypocrite, uh, or uh, 
sister of or, or daughter of or uh, you know of Ali Drama or or, or uh, Muhammad Mojab, uh, right? Mojab. Muhammad Hijab, Sister Fifi, all of them, if they have sisters, wives, daughters, mothers, the Quran loves to talk about the women. They call them the queens of Jannah. Bro. If you go to Jannah, you're going to be like a queen. Bro. If you go to the pimps of pimps, Allah himself, his paradise, his Jannah, they call Jannah in Arabic, you go there, you're going to be called Aruban Atraba. Chapter 56, I 37. What are those words? If you ask any Muslim, he, he can't give you an answer what those words exactly are. Muslim scholars need to give their interpretation for these words. Because clearly these are not Arabic words. Right? Clearly those Arabic, those words are not Arabic words in the Quran. Right? Uruban Atraba. Quran. Quran chapter 56, ayah 37, all right? Uruban atraba. Now, if you are a smart person, and you call yourself a, a person in Islam, uh, you know, let's say you are a Muslim woman. Look, maybe this is uh, Fatima, maybe this is Aisha, maybe this is uh, Hafza. I don't know what kind of Muslims, uh, what kind of names you have. Anyway, let's say these three women are Muslims. After hearing the following, they will say, Allah called us what? What did Allah call Muslim women in his Quran? Allah called us what? <laughs> well, this is what Allah called you. If we go, guys, if we go to the book of As-Suyuti, As-Suyuti. Who is As-Suyuti, guys? The guy who wrote Tafsir al-Jalalain. That guy. <laughs> As-Suyuti, in his Tafsir al-Jalalain, Right, that guy. If we go to another book called Shaqaq al-Atraj fi Raqaq al-Ghunj, Ta'lif al-Imam al-Hafiz, again Imam al-Hafiz, Imam Jalal al-Din, Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, the guy who wrote Tafsir al-Jalalain, basically, and he even we see that he uh, he died in the year 911 after Hijra, right? He, the, the means after Hijra. In the year 911 after Hijrah. Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. That guy. Right? In his book on page 69. On, his, on page 69. Guys, uh, <clears throat> is, is Haq Ibrahim is too embarrassed. Right? He's too embarrassed. He's not here to learn. He come here to distract you guys. Okay? Let the admins take care of it. We have admins for that. Don't focus on Ishaq Ibrahim. He came to distract you guys because he's too embarrassed about Allah the pimp and his fraud prophet Muhammad. Now here we can find the Quran. This is the Quran, Uruban Atraba. So Asuyuti is quoting the Quran, chapter 56, ayah 37. This ayah, let me go to the Quran. Chapter 56. And I'm going to give you my own personal translation for it, guys. Just wait. Bear with me. Chapter 56, Ayah 37. You see it? Ayah 37. Now here they give you a false translation. Here, this is the, the word. These are two of the words that we're talking about. Oruban Atraba. And they give you all kind of false translation for it. Because they are too ashamed. An Arabic scholar would not dare to give the right translation. And remember, more than 80% of the Muslim Ummah more than 80% of the Muslims on this planet don't know Arabic. So they are dependent on the false translations like these. So if we want to learn about what it means, we go to page 69 of a Suyuti's book. And he's going to explain to us what it means. Especially the first word. Uruban. Uruban. What does it mean, Uruban? So Allah the Most High, right, about this, that the women of Jannah, Right? Ahlul Jannah, Nisa Ahlul Jannah, the women of Jannah. He's, he's describing the women of Jannah. Guys, he, uh, Allah is saying he's, he's going to describe the women of Jannah. The women of Jannah, right? Let's say you have a Muslim mother, maybe she died, or daughter, or sister, she died, and she, she might go to Jannah, brother. 
So Allah is going to give a description and he calls them Uruban Atraba. Those women are called Uruban Atraba who go to Jannah according to Allah. And now to understand what Uruban means here, look what it says and I'm going to give you my translation. Let me read the Arabic first. Atbaq al-Mufassirun wa ahl al so the uh, the people of the uh, the scholars, right, or who give tafsir and the scholars of the language, wa ahl al the people of the of the language, Arabic language, ala an al-'urub jam' 'urub aw 'urub wa innaha al-qahba. Uh -uh. So the word 'urub the word 'urub is plural, right? And it's the meaning, the meaning of it is Al-Qahba. Yes, hello? Yes, hello. Hello, you're a Muslim, my friend? Yes, I am. Okay, welcome. You're a Sunni, you're a Shia, what are you exactly? It's not about to be pretty. What? It is not about to be pretty for you. It's not about to be pretty for me. Are you a Sunni Muslim, my friend? I, I hope that uh, it's going not to be uh, pretty for me, brother. I don't like pretty. I like, uh, you know, big boobs. Well, I've been, I've been waiting, a, I've been waiting a, a long time. Ah, you're waiting. To a... talk to you because... Uh, oh, that's great. I've been waiting to expose, you know, your tactics. Ah, what's your I name? What's your name, my friend? What's your name? Well, how can I call you? Aisa. Your name is Isa. Ah, okay. Welcome, Isa. You're a Sunni, Isa? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're, uh, I called you uh, back and I heard your kid talking instead of you, so I hang up. I don't like to have kids on my uh, live show. So I think it was your kid. So welcome anyway, Isa. Welcome, Isa. We're talking about chapter 56, ayah 37. You know Arabic? Yeah, so we're live now, right? Yeah, yeah, we are live. Can you read uh, what is on the page, my friend? Since you are you are here with me and we are talking about the screen here. Go ahead. Can you read and translate, please? Uh, mute YouTube. Make sure to mute YouTube to see the screen. And mute it so that I'm we can. Not, okay, not go, to YouTube. YouTube. go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Go go to my live show. I'm I'm uh, streaming right right now live on air. Go to my YouTube so that you can see in the screen. But make sure to mute YouTube so that you can only talk through Skype. Because everything is on the screen. And I like you to bust me, man. I mean, after 15 years, I would love a Muslim to bust me so that I can, uh, you know, stop uh, doing this. Stop exposing Allah and his uh, fraud prophet. So I would love to, uh, you know. Okay, well, today's your lucky day. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. Guys, this, so, this Muslim friend of ours here, uh, Isa, he's going to bust Rob Christian. Me, okay, read it. Hold on a second. Where is the mute? I don't see mute. Where's mute? Did you say inshallah, Isa? Maybe Allah can. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just paused. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Okay. This is a Suyuti's book, my friend. And we are uh, showing chapter 56. A Suyuti, Jalaladina Suyuti. This is his book here. شقاق الأطرج في رقاق الغنج by Imam Al-Hafiz Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. Can you read it? Please confirm, say yes. This is correct. I, I, I see what's on your screen. Okay. But, okay, translate. Um, uh, read what, it and what, translate for me, please. Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on a second. Are you trying to, are we doing the explanation of a hadith or explanation of Quran? Quran, or what are doing Quran brother. Quran al -Azim. Okay, if you're, doing, if you're doing explanation of Quran, since you are not a specialist in the field of tafsir. Oh, then you, you are? You, you are? To... Wait, you are? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm a layman. Okay, this like, is well, okay, like, I'm not I, I'm not a specialist, so I go to the specialist. I go to Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. This is his book. Do you see it? It's on the screen. Okay, that's a, that's the name, but that's a scholar. Yes. And he's going to use he's going to use hadith, and he's going to use uh, hadith to explain the Quran. Mm -hmm. But the only problem is you don't know what is an authentic hadith from what is a weak hadith. No, okay. So you, you, okay, you read, know read, read what it says. Things. Read, read. Brother, read, read. You read. Start from here. Look what it says here. Read. You know Arabic, right, Aisha? There's no point in me reading it if we don't know if the Okay, read it. Read it. Maybe I'm lying. Read it and translate. Maybe I lie. Translate. 
Read and translate, please. Agi sir. Come on, don't waste my time. If you if you called me, listen, you said you're going to expose me. Beautiful. Yes. So don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. Read what is on the screen. This is page 69 of the book of As-Suyuti, Jalal al-Din, Imam al-Hafiz Jalal al-Din As-Suyuti, his book, page 69. It's on the screen. Read it. Read. Start reading from here. Okay. So where's the English? Let's cut right to the uh, This book is not, this book is not in you're, English, brother. You're, you're, brother, okay, no book, okay, no original. You're, you're, listen you're, carefully, brother, brother, brother. No original book is in English. You know, all the books, all the books of the scholars, even the Quran, Sunnah, all, all of the books are in Arabic, not in English. So read very Arabic very and translate. So Maybe I'm question. lying. I have, okay, I have a question. I have a question. Read, read. If you're no, 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 okay, no. Question. question comes after. Question comes after. Read and then translate. Hello? Read, the, read, read the, what's on the page. So yeah, read on the page. Your viewers don't understand Arabic. Hello? Oh, your viewers oh, yeah. don't... Understand okay, Arabic. you so you you teach Arabic. me Arabic. You teach me and you teach the audience Arabic. Maybe I'm lying. No, no, no. I, I just want to get some context here. You're going, going to your expose me, you, brother yes, Isa. Isa, you know. said you're going to expose me. Beautiful. I like. Yes. I love to be exposed by you, Muslimin. Okay. okay, read. Okay. This is the original book in Arabic. Read it and translate. I just want to understand first. What would be the point if your viewers? Your connection understand. is bad. Can you repeat what you said, please? If your viewers don't understand Arabic, why am I reading this in Arabic? Because you're the Muslim, not us. You are. You need to teach me the the language of Allah, the language of your uh, prophet. This is our, was your uh, was Muhammad talking mean, English? Hold on, this is, maybe this, Muhammad, this is uh, guys. Class. Maybe Muhammad talked English. I don't know. Hold on, hold on. This is not an Arabic class for you. What? I'm trying to expose your disbelief. I'm trying to expose this your is lies. It's my friend. About, it's not about, okay, it's not expose Arabic. it. Read it. Read it and translate. Don't tell me you don't know Arabic. You don't Arabic. You don't know Arabic, don't you? Yeah, I know. I, I know. I know Arabic. Okay, read then, guys. He said it. It's recorded. He's he knows Arabic. Okay, read it. Start from here. Where my cursor? You see my cursor here? I'm making circle. Okay, start no, reading from there. Isa okay. is going to read for us, guys. Uh, what? What does it mean? Okay, translate. I don't know what that means. Oh, you can you can read, but you don't understand what you read. No, I, mean, I, don't, know. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what that, know what that last word means. What? I don't know what that last word means. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? That's, that's what I'm saying. You, my friend, you, you are stealing the Wi-Fi of your neighbors, right? You, you're stealing the wife of your neighbors, right? Can you can you repeat what you said? Because your connection is really dive, brother. Okay, let me go inside the house. Hold on a second. Okay. He's reading, but he doesn't understand what he's reading. Can you imagine? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. What does it mean? Wa inna al qahba. What does it mean? So what is the meaning of the word Uruban according to Allah? Because Allah is the one saying Uruban Atraba. This is Quran, right? Here, this word here. Salam alaikum, brother. Aisa, are you going to waste my time, Aisa? I don't have all no, uh, nice. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm trying to uh yes. I'm trying to put this on speaker. Okay. Put put Hold on. Put, put speaker, brother. Okay, speaker off. Yes. How do you turn it on? Okay. Okay. Maybe this does it. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, there we go. There okay. we go. Okay. 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 So Translate what according. Read? What is the, what are the mufassirun? Let us start with the uh, zero. Mufassirun. They are the the people who explain the meaning of the Quran. Thank you. And wa ahlul lugha. What are those? The people of language. People of language. So the mufassirun, adbaqa al-mufassirun wa ahl al meaning the people of the language and the and the scholars who give tafsir for the Quran, they have what? What mean, what does adbaqa means? Hold on, let me get back to YouTube. Hold on. Mm. Okay. They it means basically they confirm, they 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 
agree uh you know they they publish whatever you want to want to say uh, uh, me, so the scholars and the people of the uh, language all agreed that the meaning of al arab or uh, uh Uruban, what does it mean wainaha meaning and she is um where are you at Please, uh, Aisa, Aisa, say inshallah, Aisa. You forgot to say inshallah because now you're wasting my time and your time. No, we have plenty of time. No. Because uh, people like Ibn Fibin always say, you you guys only go to uh, to Google and you, and you know, that's what he says about David Wood. You only go to, you are Google scholars, brother. No, we, I'm showing the book. Finally, we have a guy called Rob Christian. He's showing the book in Arabic. So, you, so people like Ibn Fibin can't call me a Google scholar. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what's your point. My That's point what is, know. what what's does the point? word Uruban, Allah is calling the women of Jannah, like your daughter, maybe you have a daughter, maybe you have a wife who will go to Jannah, maybe your mother. You know, if she dies, she go to Jannah. Allah is calling them Uruban Atraba. Now, according to Mufassirun, according to the Tafsir Daddies, and the people of the language, so the scholars of the language, they have agreed that it means what? Uruban, what does it mean? The Quran, the word in the Quran, what does it mean in chapter 56, ayah 37? This word here, what does it mean? Read it and translate those two words. What? I don't want to say it. You're, to the, you're the Muslim. You say it. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, problem. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No problem. Guys, look how patient I am with uh, our friend Isa. Next time they can say, Rob Christian, you're always muting people and uh, you don't allow them to speak. We have all the time of the world. Okay, so we're at the 56th chapter. Chapter, uh, the verse 37. Chapter 56, ayah 37. And this is the book of Suyuti. And he's, he's explaining in his book that Allah calls the women of Jannah. Look, this is about Nisa Ahlu Jannah. Nisa Ahlu Jannah. So the, the women uh, of uh, the inhabitants of Jannah, right? Of the paradise, of Islamic paradise of Allah. And he's going to explain to us what the meaning is. That's what it says, right? And he, he confirms that all the Mufassirun and all the people of the language, they agree that the meaning of Uruban, al Arab, Uruban, this first word here, Uruban, Uruban, Okay, chapter 56, ayah 37 of the Quran. And it means what? Why now what? Come on, Isa. You said you, know the, you, said you know the you said you know the meaning. You said you know the meaning. Okay, I'm waiting for you to tell me what it means. I'm still waiting. You tell me you're the Muslim, not me. Please explain to the audience what it means. What does Uruban mean? Aisa. Yalla ya tender, Aisa. And, tender and unaging. That's what it means. Tender and unaging. No, you're lying. I'm not lying. I'm, yes. I'm reading right from the... No, I'm the right word the... Qahba. What does Qahba mean? When you say to a woman, you're a Qahba. That's what it says. What does it mean? I have no idea what that word means. Yes, you know. It's an insult, right? When you call a woman a Qahba. Ya Qahba. What are you saying to her? <clears throat> I don't know. You tell yes, me. You're you Arab, yes, you know. Yes, you know. You know. Aren't you? Aren't you Arab? Yeah, I, I'm Arab, but you, you're the Muslim. You, uh, I mean, this is the so, language so of what Allah. Does it mean? This what is does what it means? it means here. This is what it means. You see on the screen, chapter fifty-six, I have thirty-seven. This is my translation, brother. This is the book Shaqaq al Atraj fi Raqaq al Ghunj by a Suyuti Jalal al-Din al Suyuti Imam al Hafs Jalal al-Din al Suyuti on his page sixty-nine, as we showed you. Uruban uh -huh. Atraba, the transliteration. Uruban Atraba. Okay. The scholars okay. and the people of the language, of the Arabic language, agreed that Urub is the plural of Arub. And the meaning is what? Qahba. Wait a minute. What do you mean Arub? Where do you say Arub at? Al, al, al Arab, Al Arab, Jamu Here. Uruba. Here. Jamu Uruba. Where do you Can you read this part? Read this part. I'm reading it right So now. the Mufassirun wa Ahl al ala in uh -huh. an, what? Uh -huh. Al Arab, Jam, uh -huh. yeah, yes. Al Arab, yes. and Wa Inna, yes. Wa Inna, no, no. Al What? What is that? What's the word after Jam? What's What's the word after Jam? And Al Arab, Arab, yeah, Arab. What? Uh -huh. Wa Inna, What? And the meaning you know, of that you is. You skipped over the word. 
what's the what's what's the word that you mis, that you mispronounced? You said Arub. 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 Wa innaha. That does not say Arub. It says Araba. What does it mean? You don't even know Arabic, uh, brother. Brother, what does it mean? Arub. It says Arub, right? Wa innaha. What? Al Qahba, right? Okay. What does it mean? What is Qahba? You know? Come on. You don't. Don't tell me you don't know. Qahba. I do not. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. I don't know what that word means. Are you saying I'm lying? Okay. Um, I don't know what that word means. Well, I do mean. I don't know. Mean it's a very basic word. And when you call a woman a Qahba, it means she is a whore. So do you agree with is Allah that, okay, okay. that do you that, agree that, with okay. Allah that uh, that okay, women of on, Jannah on, your mother who is going to go to Jannah she's a whore? Does it say al qahba in the Quran? Well it says in the book of Suyuti yes and the meaning of Arab So who is Arab okay, is who is one person? Let, let, okay let's say let's say what you're saying is right okay Suyuti he's not the prophet he's one person these are his words Okay I challenge where you to it, say where, that the Jalaluddin of Suyuti I I challenge you to say that the Jalaluddin of Suyuti is a filthy liar can you do that for me please I would never say he's not a filthy liar. Okay, he's so who are you, though. Isa? Who he's are you? Okay, can, can, tell tell the audience on, according according to you yourself, compared to Jalal Din Suyuti, what are you, Isa? You don't know Arabic. Okay. You can let, read let, Arabic, let me ask but you, you don't understand hold on, hold on. the Arabic. Hold on. You don't speak let me ask Arabic. Question. Yes. Can I ask your question? Can I ask your question? Okay, uh, I want you to be honest. Regarding to now. this topic, please, okay. I want I want you. Yes, please, please be honest. What is Consider upon the Muslims. What is the most authentic book of Tafsir? Uh, it's not only one, right? There are many. You have Ibn no, Kathir, no, there's, you there's have Tabari, uh, Qurtubi, okay. you have Kathir, many. Very good. very good, very good. Ibn Kathir, according yes. to the Muslims, is the is the best book of Tafsir of the Quran. Why? No, that's don't a lie. Use that? No, that's a lie. That's not a lie. That's no, not it's a lie. not. It's, it's not a, a lie. A, what? It's not a lie. No, the, the cram. You're lying. As, the best, as, the on, best of the best is a Tabari. Tabari is the who's number one. Who's a Tabari? There, there, there is no who's book a called a Tabari. Yeah, yeah. Well, he uh, is your scholar. But uh, you're, no, you're deflecting. But he, you're hold deflecting. On, hold on, hold on, hold I on. am showing hold you on. what the, the listen. Uh, Isa, 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 We can talk. Both. We can both talk, right? I okay. am showing you from a very, very trustful, very respectful guy called uh, Jalaluddin Suyuti. Uh, uh, any okay, Sunni Muslim knows Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, the same guy who what gave Tafsir al-Jalalain, right? In his book, Shaqaiq al-Atraj, he, he, he didn't only write one book, he wrote many books. In his book, Shaqaiq okay. al-Atraj, Fi Raqaiq al-Gunj, by al suyuti he explains on page 69 in the Arabic what the meaning of Uruban is. And he, and okay. he says so. that all the scholars of the language and the Quran they agree that the meaning of Urub or Uruban is Qahba. Beautiful. That's what he said. That's, yes. that's what he said. That doesn't that mean it's necessarily right. Now Did he lie? Is, Did he lie? I challenge you to on, say he lied. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yes. According to the consensus of the Muslims, what is, what is a better book to go to if you want to learn Tafsir al-Quran? Okay. If, if we go, if we, show, I, 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 I can show you, I can show you Ibn Kathir. No, I can show you Ibn Kathir. Do you like me to show you Ibn Kathir? Yes, please, please. Guys, he likes me to show him Ibn Kathir. Okay, but before we go, continue. Can you say to everybody, Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti is a filthy liar and a deceiver. He lies about Allah. Can you do that for me? Did please? I say that? Okay, no, did I no, say yeah, that? Basically, yes, because you're, you just no, called him a liar. No, I didn't. Yes, you there's did. You, no, you don't trust him. Okay, say I don't oh, trust him. He's a filthy there, liar. Oh, say oh, it. Listen, listen, listen. There's a difference between lying and making a mistake or having your own opinion that's not the correct opinion. He's not. He it's can, not his opinion. He says that. all of the language, all the scholars of the Arabic language. That's what he said, and okay, all he can, he can all the mufassirun they agreed on the meaning of Arab. It means a whore. Okay. Did he lie? Now, I, I want if, you to if, say. If I, okay, listen. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Isa, no, no, book, you hold on. Isa, 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 listen carefully. You hold on. Did answer my question? Did Jalaluddin Suyuti lie in his book Shaqaq al Atraj fi Raqaq al Ghunj? Please say yes. I just answered the question. Did he make him okay? Did he, he did, make a mistake or not, lie? He did not. He did not intentionally lie. Okay. But he has but his who, own opinions. He's, who agrees he's with you? One scholar. He, who, he's one scholar from the thousands of okay, scholars. Of okay, show Islam. me one scholar. And maybe show me opinion. one scholar who said a Suyuti made a mistake in his book. Show me one. Challenge. Show me one scholar that who says say, that okay, a Suyuti that, that lied say, in his okay. book on page sixty-nine. Please show me a, never, a source. Okay, first of all, I never said he lied. 
Okay, or so he did not lie. Sometimes, did he lie or, or is, did he make a mistake? Or is he correct here about the meaning of Oruban? I just explained that to you. He did not intentionally lie, but he could have made okay. a mistake. According That's to who? who according to you? To according to you? According to who? Go to Ibn Kathir and you'll find out. No, no. Go, to Go according right to who? Now. Look Listen, Isa, Isa, you said you're going to embarrass me. You're going to expose me. Fine. I am. Right now. Show, me, right now. show me one source who disagree with this. Okay, why don't you go to Ibn Kathir, the top series we're, Ibn we're, Kathir, we're, look up that... I'm up about that to show you Ibn Kathir, no problem. What doing, you, hold on, hold on. What you want? You're picking I am, But I want you to you're, tell, show me one source that disagrees and say, As-Suyuti, Jalal al-Din As-Suyuti, made a mistake on page 69 in his book, Shaqaq al-Atraj fi Raqaq al -Ghunj. Can you show me that source? Since you are a scholar, not me. Said, you're on, the scholar, on, right? It's, it's, it's common sense that every person can make a mistake. That's just common sense. Okay, there's show no me, need, show me, show, show no me a scholar, scholar who said uh, a Suyuti made a mistake. Go ahead, I'm waiting. You're you're changing the subject now. Because at I'm first you said this. you're going to go to Ibn Kathir and look up. I the, am the, going the, to, the, but the, before the, we that, go that, to that Ibn verse. Kathir, my friend, I have Ibn Kathir here in front of me. S say to everybody, say to everybody, a Suyuti, Jaladin Suyuti made a mistake, and he's a filthy liar. He is lying about the Quran. Say it. Why do you keep why do you keep adding the filthy liar part? Because you disagree with you. him. That means I, he's lying. He's he's lying. No, it yes. could mean he has a different Who are you? Aisa, who opinion. are you? Okay. Who are you compared it, it to, to a Suyuti? A who are you compared to a Suyuti? Aisa, you don't know you don't know I'm, even I'm two no words one. Arabic. I'm no one to, Okay, I'm so no one you are lying, he's correct. What are you talking about? What are you there's talking scholars about? Who, there's scholars there's scholars who are more knowledgeable than Suyuti, which I'm trying to point you to. That does not say that, uh, that word means qahba. Qahba. Oh, now you know the meaning of qahba. Suddenly you know the meaning of qahba. The book, you, and you know this, you know this. The best book <laughs> to go to for tafsir Aisa, suddenly you now you know the meaning of qahba. Eh? But the, according to what you said, ah. I'm, I'm trying to help you out here. I'm oh, trying to help, help you out me. here. You okay. are helping me. Please teach me. Know, Please teach me Arabic. You, hold on, hold on. Brother, teach you me know, Arabic. Hold on. You know that the best book of tafsir, according to the consensus of the Muslims, is Ibn Kathir. Uh, okay, okay, okay we'll go. Listen, listen, uh, listen, book. Abdullah, Abdullah, listen. Before we continue, can you please say, a Suyuti made a mistake and he lied in his book on page 16. Can you do that? So, oh, that, so, so, we, so it's recorded. Okay, okay, no, so, so, we, listen, so that we can move on as, and on, I can on, put Ibn Kathir. Look, I have Ibn on, Kathir here on. before me. Here's Ibn Kathir. I, I know your tactics. So what you got to do I'm going to go to Ibn Kathir. Don't worry, brother. Can I finish talking? You're going to say, either you say this or I'm not going to continue. And then you know I'm not going to say it. Uh, so then are you afraid say, that oh, I'm going I'm to trick you? Up, I didn't continue. I want an argument. Uh, Can you please? I'm not going to say that. I, uh, I already told you. Okay, so you did not. So either you agree with him not, or you disagree with him. Which one is it? I disagree. I disagree because I know the Ibn Kathir. So you disagree. So he's lying. So he's lying, right? Okay. He's so lying. So now let's compare. Let's As compare that to Jalal al Din. Jalal al Din, who wrote Tafsir al Jalalain, he lied in his in this book, right, on page sixty nine. Okay, where is Tafsir al Jalalain? Where is that book at? That's a different book. I'm showing you this book. A Suyuti wrote okay. more than one, only one book or he wrote hundreds of books? Oh, he wrote hundreds of books. Yes. Yes, brother. Okay. So This is now, one of them. The, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to get across to you is, you know that Ibn Kathir is the best book for Tafsir, ah. but you, inten you intentionally don't go to that book because you're trying to, you're trying to, Pick and choose. You're you trying see, to pick from yeah, here guys, from guys. Yeah, yeah. I pick, I pick and choose. I am reading from a page, and I'm the one picking and choosing. Guys, this why is the Quran. Okay. This is Allah. Okay. Allah okay. Ta'ala. Right? Why, Allah why is the one saying why? it, and then He okay. gives. Why look, look. Aisa, Aisa. Just a second. We can't talk. All. Look. This is Uruban Atraba. Quran that we showed you. Uruban Atraba. This is my translation for the words because not everybody knows Arabic. Al-Baqal Mufassirun wa Ahlul Lugha. That the meaning of Al Arab or Uruban. Is meaning she's the whore, and Isa okay, already confirmed just, it, right? Just, look, look. You see? Just for a second, just for a second argument, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with that word. Okay. This, okay. So you're agreeing that Allah time. calls your mother, your Allah, Allah and His Prophet call your mother, your sister and daughter, who's going to go to Jannah. They are little cock sucking whores, right? Oh, that's some very nice language for someone. Who's yeah, but that's that's what. Al no, 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 no. Hey, so listen. Hold, hold on, I'm not one saying it. Allah is saying it. Oh, no, hold on. Allah, you're the pimp saying it, and his oh, Rasul. Oh, wait. Now, so now you ask me a question trying to answer. You yeah. ask me a question, can I answer now? Without yeah, answer, being interrupted? Answer, answer. Okay, so you're supposed to be a follower of Jesus, and you're using words like that. 
Well, and it's not my words. I, I, it's not my words. It's the words of Allah. Are you embarrassed of Allah? Where, okay, where where does it say cocksucking in that verse you just you just read? You just showed up on the screen. Where does it say cocksucking? What does the what so does the what does the whore do? Make, okay, okay, explain so to want, us. Listen, okay, what does the so kahba do when you pay on, her money? What she's doing? What she's going listen, to do listen, in your bed? Listen, listen. Okay, listen. Oh, uh, you listen, can tell okay. the people. Listen, guys, listen, listen, answer. listen. Okay, I'm trying to answer. Can I answer? Can I answer? Please. Yeah, yeah. Answer. You ask me questions. I'm trying to answer. Yeah. So, if you want to say that that word means whore, okay, fine. Okay. But when what you, do you when, okay, when, yeah? Look, hold, no, okay, describe to us what whores do. I want to learn from you what whores do. Maybe you know better than me. Okay, please do not interrupt. I'm okay. talking about point across. Okay. Point across is that everyone who's listening right now knows what whore is. You don't have to go further and say cocksucking. That Why not? Why not? Have, because Allah already made you, it clear, that right? That means that you have. Hold on, let me finish. <laughs> that means you are not. This is your example of Jesus, right? You're saying if Jesus was here. Why are you embarrassed he about say, Allah, my friend? He, Jesus, he listen, listen, brother. How, Jesus has nothing to do with this. You, this on, is listen, your Quranic. How, how, listen, listen. listen, I, listen. Okay, Jesus has nothing how, to do with the Quran. How do you expect people to believe that you are a follower of Jesus? Who Listen, you, who Jesus has nothing to do. Don't deflect. Best, Isa, Isa, I'm not going to allow you. Isa, I'm going to hang up on you. Jesus has nothing oh, to do. There we I go. am no there Abdul. Go. Abdul, Victory Isa, you are so as embarrassed. As, this, Listen, this time, Abdul, you get, are too embarrassed winning, about the words of Allah and His Quran, winning. right, Isa? Hold on, hold on, you are no, hold you on, hold on. on. You are too embarrassed about the words of Allah. We all, everybody knows that a whore. Why are you saying you're gonna hang up? What a whore does and what a whore, when you going to hire a whore, right? What she's going to do. So are you embarrassed about the words of Allah calling Muslim women in Jannah qahba? Okay, are you embarrassed for trying to represent Jesus and using the word cocksucking? That's what. That's my question to you. I am not the one saying it. I'm only reading and quoting. You just quoting said, who said it? What? You said, you said cocksucking. No one, no, no one yeah, well, said that except for a you. A whore, it, th that's what a whore does, right? Did I lie? Please we say know that. We, we, don't need, we don't need. We don't need the details. Okay. Well, give us the details, Allah. Allah didn't give the details, right? Allah didn't give the details. He said it's uh, your mother, everyone, your sister, your listen, wife is a cocksucking whore. Listen, but he left out everyone, the cocksucking. Everyone here lives in America. I think we all know what a whore is. Okay. Okay. So, when you go, when okay, you go are you sucking, okay? Are you trying? You Isa, go, you are say, you trying you say to say that you're embarrassed about the words of Allah in His Quran? Is that what you're trying to say, Isa? Why are you so embarrassed? Isn't this your Quran? Are you the Muslim or me? Am I quoting and reading what it what it says as it is? Does it say whore? Does it say qahba? Yes or no? That that word is not in the Quran. The word in the Quran is uruban. Uruban. Okay, what does it mean? Okay. What does uruban mean according to Suyuti? Suyuti is one. He is an Arabic scholar who knows he's Arabic better person. than you and he me. I'm not, not the one he, saying he, it. Okay, Suyuti <laughs> is not. He's not Allah. He's not a messenger. Okay, He's okay, please say a Suyuti give is a me, filthy liar. Can okay, you do that? So that I can proof. record you and for everybody to hear this, and see. This, this this is your tactic. Your tactic is to bring How is it person. my tactic? Are we reading from the book of Suyuti? Yes or no? Do you okay. want me to guys let us show him? Guys, let let us give Isa some slack. Okay? Let us go to Ibn Kathir. No problem. Are you going to call Ibn Kathir a liar? If, I'm go, if I can you show you what I Ibn Kathir I mean, is you, going you, to say about the word. You, no, 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 no. You but. said, show me Ibn Kathir. Are you going to call Ibn Kathir a filthy liar too? I didn't call you a filthy liar. Oh, no, no you, said, you said, you, you to, said no, Ibn no, Kathir. No, no, no. Right now, Isa, Isa, you said Ibn Kathir is the best of the best. That's what you said, right? Please repeat what you said. Didn't you call Ibn Kathir the best of the best? He's the best person okay. to go book a Guys, here. look no, at the... Thank you. Okay, so, Aisa, listen. wait. Aisa, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me show you what Ibn Kathir says. This is Ibn Kathir for the same chapter, same ayah. Verily, we have created for them a special creation and made them virgins. Urub, atrab. Do you see it? Do you see it? I'm trying to let my screen catch oh, up. Oh, brother. Yeah, yeah, let, let. Before the rapture, dude. <clears throat> Before okay, the rapture. Yeah. Go. Okay. Well, no, I you see the screen, it. right? This is Ibn Kathir, brother. I have to, I Let have me share to the screen. Let me share the source with our friends in the live chat. Here. Okay, r read with me now. Can you read it? Can you see the screen? Don't say no. Don't waste my time. Hold on, I'm pulling up right now. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Why did you click it away, man? I had to pause it so it wouldn't echo. You know, muted. Don't be 
someone who wastes my time. Mute it. I told you to mute it so that you can at least see the screen. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm okay, brother. okay. Okay. Look what it says. And made them virgins. Orub atrab. So he's talking about the same ayah. Orub and atrab. Orub atrab. For those on the right. The ayah described the women who will be on the beds and couches. So, he's, so Ibn Kathir is only giving a description of the meaning. He's not saying as it is what it means. He's giving his description. So those are women who are on the beds and couches where? In Jannah. Right, guys? In Jannah. But since mentioning the beds hints them, they were not directly mentioned. So he's not giving the exact meaning of the word. Then if we scroll down, look what it says. Uh, just a second, just a second. So, when they were displayed before him in the afternoon, well-trained horses of the highest breed, he said, I did love to go, and, and he gives all kind of stuff. I want to know what it means. So, according, let's see, and he's giving all kind of, uh, okay, I, I find, give me, man. Then he says, I'm looking for that part. Okay, here, Orub. Saeed ibn Juray reported that Ibn Abbas said, who is Ibn Abbas, Isa? Can you tell me? The cousin of Ibn Muhammad, Abbas, right? Uh, the, Ibn Abbas was the cousin of Muhammad. Ah, okay. Guys, so, Hebr al-Ummah, the ink of the Ummah, the Ibn Abbas, the Tarjaman al-Quran, the guy who basically translates the Quran. All right, that guy. Giant of giants. They are in an infatuated state. So he's talking about the Urub. They are in an infatuated state with their husbands in Jannah. Haven't you ever seen? Look, Ibn Kathir is giving only description. He doesn't give you the direct meaning. He's only giving a description. Haven't you ever seen, brother, a she-camel in heat? Can you get, tell us what a she-camel in heat means, brother Isa? You just said it. What is it? What is it? What does it mean? You just said it, a she came on heat. Yeah, what does that mean? So she is like a whore who is in heat. I didn't know what that mean, but I mean a whore. Ah, that's, that's yeah, it mean. does mean that. Uh, that's, so that's so Abdul, Here, well, Abdul, 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 Abdul. Ibn Kathir does not disagree. He only gives a description. So in other words, Ibn Kathir is one of the tafsir daddies who agreed okay. on what is right report. Says, let me let me finish. Right. Isa, let me finish. I'm, I'm so he agrees. He let, let me finish, Isa. Or I'm going to hang up here. Let me finish. Who agreed with his re what, what is reported by a Suyuti. Ibn Kathir mentions the following word in his tafsir. Taghannuj. If you go to the Arabic, you can read taghannuj. Meaning to suck. It means to suck. A woman in heat. This is in Mu'jam al-Ghani, which is an official Arabic lexicon. I can show it, no problem. So in other words, Ibn Kathir describes, he only gives description how a Muslim woman in Jannah will be. A nice little cock-sucking whore, Qahba in heat, like a she-camel. Like a Suyuti mentioned in his book. You're, show, you're showing those matters again. No, okay. no, 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 oh, no, no, no. I'm only, no. I'm only what? reading uh, what your Mufassirun you're are saying. You're not reading anywhere that says cock-sucking. That's, that's okay, what does, okay, 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 brother, what does, okay, what do oh. whores do? Please explain to us, when you hire a whore, what is the whore going to do? Okay. What is Here she? Says, she's going to do sucky sucky for five dollar, oh, right? Hold on. Oh man, that's that's some very no, very that, good manners. I, I, my friend, I'm quoting what your really Allah is of, saying about women. Modesty, are you embarrassed of, that your Muslim women in Jannah are little cock sucking whores? Yes or no? I am oh, saying man, it as it hurts. is. It hurts, huh? It hurts. Okay, and he's got. Uh, guys, he's too embarrassed, guys. Too embarrassed. Yeah, I, I lost him. I don't know what happened in the end. He's gone. Guys, am I the one say, saying it? Or that's what Allah calls Muslim women in Jannah? Your Muslim mothers, sisters, daughters, if you have any dignity... I lost you there, uh, Isa. I don't know what yeah, happened okay. to you. I, I, thought yeah. you, I thought you hung up on me. Okay, okay Isa, so, Isa, okay. am that, I the one that, calling that women whores or what? is it your Allah? Go ahead. Okay, so you already showed that in Ibn Kathir says nothing okay, about Okay, did Ibn Kathir lie? Okay. He lied? 
Did Ibn Kathir lie? No, I'm saying you showed me an Ibn Kathir and it says nothing about horse. Okay, what is a she camel in heat? She is, is look look what kind of description Ibn Kathir what is giving a, for Orob. What does a she camel heat have to do with a whore? That's what we want to know. Well, what is, he's giving a description. Tell you tell me what it means. Uh, what are is, you me what, what does it mean when what does it mean when Ibn okay, Kathir? Hold on, hold on, hold on, no, no, on, you hold on. on. I'm I need to ask you this question. <laughs> what does it mean when Ibn Kathir calls Muslim women in Jannah she camels in heat? What does he mean by that? It means that they are ready to, to? have ready to be intimate with their husband. Now you tell me, are you telling me that when you hear the word whore, the first thing that comes to your mind is a she camel in heat? Uh, that's not what I, I'm not saying it. Ibn Kathir agrees they have, with it. They have nothing to do with each other. They have absolutely nothing to do with each other. You're making all this up. Now, my question to you is... I'm not what, making anything what, what, up. I'm reading what, on, what, it, what it says there. I got a question for you. I got yes. a question for you. Okay. What are we comparing this to? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold no. on. Oh, you don't want to answer questions. That's like, you know, no, 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 I'm not, you. I'm not allowing you to you, run from the topic, uh, brother. Uh, only I can punch. If we go, only, listen carefully. If we go, on, no, 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 on. no, listen carefully. Uh, listen carefully, uh, Isa, Isa. If I, look, this is a what? Mu'ajam al-Ghani, right? This is an Arabic lexicon dictionary. Let me give also, let's see. Let me hold give on, the link. Can Let can me the link. No, 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 just a second. Wait can a I second. ask questions here? Wait a second. Wait a second. I need to give this. You can't. To the you audience, can't okay. Fight someone. You listen can't carefully. Fight someone say, Here, listen, this is listen, listen. listen Isa. You, no, you listen. Let me finish. Listen. If we go, if we go to an Arabic lexicon like this one, and we look Rob, up the word, to stay on the, on the just I am still on the topic. At least Can allow me to finish. Let me finish. Question. Let me finish. Let me finish. I looked up the word, the meaning of what Ibn Kathir gives. He's giving us runij. Runij. What does it mean? What does this word mean in Arabic, I have, brother? I have no idea. You, have, you don't have an idea and you want to teach me your Quran? I have no idea. Okay, I never let me show you what it means. Arabic language. Okay, I'm an Arabic speaker, Habibi. Don't teach me my language. Look what it means. Did I lie, guys? What did I say? A cock sucking whore? Did I lie? So where, where is the word Gunaj in Ibn Kathir? Show me that. Okay, guys. <laughs> You know Arabic? You know you know Arabic? I know Arabic to a certain degree, but show oh, okay. me. No I'm problem. not an expert. I'm by no, oh, I'm you're by not no an expert. expert. Suddenly you're no. not an expert. You want to, to expose me race, and you want to race, teach race. teach everybody what it means. Suddenly you're not you don't know you're not an Arabic scholar. Here Ibn Kathir, no problem. Ibn Kathir. We're, Tafsir we're, al-Quran al-Azim Ibn Kathir, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let us look for the word. Just a second. Uh, give me some time to look it up for you. No problem. Now, while you're asking that question, can I just, 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 just a second. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can find it in the Arabic. Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. There are more than one pages, so we have to go through all the pages, guys. Look, Ibn Kathir needs to give us in seven different pages what the meaning of runage is. Okay, I need to do control F all the time to find the word. Just a second. Bear with me, Aisa. Okay, still not there. I have to skip through all the pages. Because you know how long Ibn Kathir tafsir can be, right? Still not there. Uh, Ibn Kathir, why do you need so, to give us so much till we can find the word? Look, 10 pages, man. <laughs> I'm showing you the, Arab the English translation and you are challenging me to go to the Arabic. Here. Read it. Uh, read it. Waqala ba'dahum uruban a. What? Isa? Okay, thank you very much. Now, what did I do? I only put it in Mu'ajam al-Ghani, Mu'ajam al-Ghani, Arabic lexicon. What does it, what does it, what does it says? Ghunuj, 
Mas, mas, copy, paste. What does it say there? Muson. Mas. Sucking. Okay, okay so she, what? so as Suyuti said, as Suyuti said she is a whore. Ibn Kathir says she is Ghunuj. She is a sucking whore. Did I lie, guys? Yes, you did. Yeah, that's a very. I say you're you're a waste of time, guys. Did I lie when I said she's a nice little cock sucking whore? A yeah, waste of time, Isa. Like any Muhammad. Guys, did I lie? Did I lie? What the meaning of ghunij is? Did I lie? No. Again, here is my personal. Enough, Isa, for fun day. Enough, enough. You're a waste of time. You have no idea what you're talking about. Taghannuj. Uh, this guy wants wants me to block him, guys. Just a second. Enough, enough waste of time, guys. I was really patient with him. I said everything as it is. I showed you from the Arabic lexicon. I showed you even Kathir. I showed you in the beginning a Suyuti's book. Did Ibn Kathir disagree? No, he agreed. He gave you a description. Right? He didn't give, he did, he's too embarrassed. Guys, again, Ibn Kathir is too embarrassed to say it as it is. So he's only giving a description of what the women would do in Jannah. Ibn, but Jaladdin al Suyuti, in his book, we showed you that it is the Qahba. Qahba. It's a whore. So one plus one, Ibn Kathir says sucking. One plus one, she is a nice little. Cock, penis, cock, sucking whore in heat, like a she camel, as Ibn Kathir said. Did I lie? <laughs> you have no idea who you're talking to. You, brother, Isa, you have no idea. Like any Muhammadan out there, you have no idea who you're talking to. When I'm going to say something, I know why I'm saying it. I'm doing, I'm doing this for 15 years, brother. And this is the filth of Islam, guys. What can we do? This is the filth of Muhammad. This is the filth of Allah in the Quran. Did we lie? No. And guys, you know, I don't like to spank the same guy over and over and over and over again. I don't see the joy in that, to be honest with you. I am doing this, guys, to show the Muslims what kind of language Allah in his Quran is using for the Muslim women? I'm showing you the filth of Muhammad and this evil cult of Satan. Muhammad did have no, he did have no, no respect for women, right? He treated them like cows to be ridden, right? Cow, like cow, Muslim women are cows to be ridden, right? This is according to Tafsir for the Quran by Al-Qurtubi. Women are like cows to be ridden. According to the Quran, women are like field to be plowed. And that's what Muhammad used to think about women. Yeah, Isa. And others like Isa. All right. So if you are too embarrassed, like Ibn Kathir, to say things as they are, instead of giving us all kind of... Uh, 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 description, they are in an infant state, brother, with their husband, brother. Haven't you ever seen a she camel in heat? She's like that. She is a nice little cock sucking whore because Taghannuj, Runj means moss, moss. And we showed you the meaning of moss, right? Did we lie? Did we lie, brother? No, you did not lie, Rob Christian. Please don't teach me my language. And don't teach as Suyuti his language. Uh, guys, do you see how, you know, when uh, David Wood, I, uh, the, uh, one of the last uh, debates of David Wood, he showed how people like Ibn Fibin, any embarrassing Muhammadan, any Muhammadan who's too embarrassed, they are going to throw all their scholars under the bus. He asked for Ibn Kathir, I showed him Ibn Kathir, but Ibn Kathir is too embarrassed to say what the meaning exactly is. He only gives a description. He's, he's telling you that she's sucking. Right? Why are you not saying what the meaning is? Don't give me a description. 
Brother, what does uh, a bicycle mean? Well, uh, brother, uh, Ibn Kathir is basically saying this. Well, a bicycle has feet. Uh, uh, he has. He ha it, uh, it has two wheels, right? Two uh, two wheels. Uh, you can sit on it. But what is it? Don't give me a description. Give me what it truly means. At least the Suyuti was not too, too embarrassed to give us the meaning. He said it as it is. Why Nal Qahba? Take a screenshot, guys. Chapter 56, I 37. The meaning of Urub or Uruban is Qahba. A whore. Your Muslim women are whores. Deal with it. That's what you Allah called them. Rob Christian, why are you using those words? Those are not my words. Those are the words of your scholars. Those are the words of your Quran, of Allah, of your prophet, man. Didn't your prophet also say, if you're proud about a jahiliya, go buy the penis of your father? Huh? Did Muhammad say that? If you are proud about a jahiliya, go buy the penis of your father and don't use a metaphor? Yes, he did. So, what's left? Why are you too embarrassed to say it as it is? I mean, your prophet was not uh, embarrassing. He was not embarrassed when he said that to his own sahab. I mean, imagine... You're walking on the street and someone is saying to you, hey, uh, uh, John Doe or whatever your name is, hey, you know what? Uh, if you're proud about the jahiliya, go suck on the penis of your father. Go bite on the penis of your father. What would you do to such a man if he approaches you on the street? If you have any dignity, you would have him at least smack him in the, in, in the, in the mouth, right? You would have at least smack him in the mouth, insulting your father like that. So what about uh, Muhammad insulting his own Sahaba? Eh? Oh, but it's the Prophet, brother. It's okay for Muhammad to say to people, go suck the penis of your father. I mean, go bite on the penis of your father. Oh, but it's the Prophet, brother. Prophet can say that. No problem. Why? Well, Muhammad is special, brother. Muhammad had all kinds of privileges, brother. Ah. Allah must have privileges too to call women like your daughters and sisters and uh, mothers. Horse. Kahba. You, you see how Muslims are too embarrassed? Rob Christian, why are you using that language? I'm not, I'm not the one saying it. I am reading. <laughs> but I didn't tell him that I was reading, guys. You know? You see how, how we can set traps like for these people easy? Rob Christian, you are using filthy language. But wait, it's not my language. I am reading what your books say, brother. I was only reading. <laughs> Moss. Sucking, okay, one plus one, a whore, sucking, what does that mean? What does, that, what does it mean when, you, when a woman is a whore and she's sucking? Yeah, brother, she's not a sucking penis whore or a penis sucking whore, right? No, no, brother, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't say that, RC. I showed him Ibn Kathir, I showed him... Uh, Majum al Ghani, Arabic lexicon, dictionary. I showed him a Suyuti. Uh, what can I do more, man? All right. Guys, I'm not, uh, I'm not using that language. Eh? Again, I'm not the one using that language. I'm only reading. I'm not allowed to use that filthy language or Muhammad. Go bite on the penis of your fathers if you're proud about the Jahiliya. Let's see if we can find that hadith, guys. <clears throat> Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Why did I put it? Why did I put it, brother? Huh? Did we lie? No, of course we're not lying here. It was narrated from Obey, Ibn Kaab, that a man boasted he was proud. In an ignorant manner of his tribal language, tribal language, lineage. Sorry, tribal lineage. So he was proud. He was boasting about the people before Islam. So he told him. So Obey told that man to bite his father's male member, the penis of his father. Why, Obey? Look, and he said he did not use a metaphor. The people around Obey who were listening, who heard it. They looked really shocked at uh, Obey. Obey, what are you seeing? Obey says, I can see what you're thinking, uh, uh, O people. And I can only say this. Now look at the reaction of Obey. He saw the people shocked. And he told them, you know what? I can only say this. 
that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us. So what did he instruct you, Ubay ibn Ka'b? And guys, Ubay ibn Ka'b is one of the writers of the Quran, right? If you hear someone, Muhammad said, Muhammad said, and I quote, if you hear someone boasting in an ignorant manner of his tribal lineage, then tell him to buy his father, male member, the penis of your father, and do not use a metaphor. And this is narrated by Ahmad, Musnad Ahmad, sorry, Ahmad, classed as Hassan by the commentators on Musnad. Okay, so it's in Musnad Ahmad. Hassan, brother, good hadith. Am I the one saying it, or did your prophet say it, go suck, go bite on the penis of your fathers? Rob, why are you using filthy language? I'm not the one. Guys, if reading means if reading the Islamic sources is insult, that means your prophet is an insult. Your prophet used insults. Your Allah used insults. Why are you blaming me? Why are you attacking me? I'm not the one. I'm reading. I mean, guys, reading is haram in it to, to these days. These days, if you read Islamic sources, you are insulting. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this guy, Isa? Rob, why are you using that language? I'm reading. Shame on you. Oh, you are ashamed, huh? You are ashamed about your prophet, huh? Oh, I, I understand. If, if this is why my, if this is was my prophet, I would be ashamed too. I would be embarrassed too. And I would not stay a Muslim for a split second, man. If I had some dignity, if I had some honor. Okay, Matthias, go, uh, go with the peace of Christ, my friend. God bless you. Rob, take it easy, Rob. Uh, should I be the one taking it easy or your prophet who used filthy language towards his own sahaba? <laughs> what a cult, man. What a cult. Imagine you are too embarrassed about your prophet, about the words of your Allah and your prophet, calling women qahba, whores. You should bite on the penis of your father if you if this guy is uh, boasting about his uh, about the jahiliya about the pre-Islamic period, brother. You know my father before before Islam. My, my father was a rich guy. He was a big, huge merchant. He went all the way to Indonesia to do business, brother. Go bite on the penis of your father if you're proud about him. That's what Muhammad said to his Sahaba. Imagine, am I the one singing this or am I only reading? Ya jahil, ya miskeen Isa. You're a jahil, you're a miskeen. You're too embarrassed. We showed him Ibn Kathir. Brother, show me Ibn Kathir. <laughs> Guys, did you take a screenshot? Take a screenshot. How many uh, scholars uh, would uh, dare to mention this? How many scholars would dare to bring up a Suyuti's book, or dare to say what the true meaning of Uruban is. Imagine you can read Arabic, but you don't understand what you read. <laughs> Poor Isa, man. Isa, I really pity you, man. I really feel embarrassed for you, man. I really feel embarrassed for you, Isa. Do we have any other Mohammedan guys? <clears throat> who likes to embarrass me in front of everybody. Oh, Rob Kishin, I'm going to expose you, Rob. I'm going to embarrass you, Rob. I'm going to end your career, Rob. Yeah, right. You and what army, man? You and what army is going to expose me? See you when they bring us these kids, man. Aisa, Aisa, I know you're listening. Aisa, I don't hate you, Aisa. Aisa, again. I do not hate you. I can be really harsh with people like you who reject their own sources. You know, you know why? Because sometimes you need to spank someone until he realizes what kind of evil, filthy, disgusting prophet he follows. And if you don't accept the truth, if you cannot handle the truth, well, it's your janazah, it's your funeral, it's your salvation, right? It's your salvation, not mine. I would never, if I would have any dignity, guys, 
if I would have any honor as a Muslim, I would not have stayed a Muslim in 2021 for a split second after finding out what Muhammad and his Allah used to call women. Muslim women, in this case. In Jannah. Penis sucking whores in heat. Wow. It's your funeral, ya Muslim. If you accept that about your women, uh, or uh, I mean, if there's a Muslim lady listening, ya Muslimi, ya Muslimat, ya Muslimat, if you are a Muslim woman, how do you accept this about yourself? Allah calling you a whore, a qahba, in His Quran. Do you have any dignity? Do you have any self-respect? Hmm. Oh man. <sighs> what can we do, guys? This is Islam. Can we expect more or less? <laughs> Muhammad... Uh, Stole the wife of his adopted son. Muhammad sleeping around with the sex slave. With the slave that he received. Not sex slave, slave. That he received as a gift. Maria al Quptiya behind the, the, the back of his wife. She comes back, she busts him. What are you doing in my bed, Prophet Rasulullah? On my day, on my bed, in my bed, you are sleeping with Maria al Quptiya? Uh, oh boy. Any Mohammedan guys? Is there any Mohammedan? Is there any Mohammedan? What about the following guys? Let's see if I can find the hadith. If we go to sunnah.com. If we type orphan girl. Hmm. I hope I can find it this way. Let's see. Look, guys, at this. Look at this disaster for the Ummah. Imagine you're a follower of Muhammad. You're a Muslim, guys. Put yourself in their shoes. And you're going to read this in Sahih Muslim. The following hadith in Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2603. All right? Let me click on it so I can give you the link. Here's the link for this hadith. Okay? What is the title uh, or the chapter of the title? Uh, title of the chapter is Whomever is cursed, reviled, or prayed against by Muhammad. So if Muhammad curses you when he does not deserve that, so if you don't deserve it, even if you're a good Muslim, you don't deserve it, but Muhammad curses you for some reason, it will be purification. So imagine if I call you a son of a, <coughs> and I'm Muhammad, I am purifying you brother when muhammad tells you you're a donkey you're a this and that he is purifying you brother look at the logic guys look how they defend this evil man who they call the final prophet the seal of all the prophets so if muhammad insults you and he curses you you are purified what is this cult man and this is only the chapter title right it's mercy when you are being cursed and insulted by the prophet, brother. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Anyway, let us read it, guys. Try not to be shocked if you, uh, this is the first time that you are reading this hadith with me. Anas bin Malik reported that there was an orphan girl. Okay, so it's about an orphan girl. With Umm Sulaim. Right? He's even giving the name of the woman that she was with. Who was the mother of Anas? So it's the mother of Anas. Okay. Allah's messenger saw that orphan girl and said. So Muhammad saw this orphan girl that was staying with Umm Sulaim. And he said. Oh orphan girl. Oh it is you. You have grown young. Oh you became a nice young lady. Muhammad is telling her. Maybe he, uh, he lusted after her. Allah knows breast brother. May you not advance in years. Muhammad is telling her. May you die right now. What? Muhammad is telling a poor orphan girl, May Allah kill you. That's what Muhammad is saying, right? 
That's what Muhammad is basically saying to her. May Allah kill you right here, right now. To an orphan, poor little girl. The slave girl, she was not only an orphan, she was the slave girl. Okay, The slave girl returned to Umm Sulaim crying. Because Muhammad just wished death upon her. Muhammad just wished death upon the poor orphan, slave orphan girl. Umm Sulaim was shocked and said, Oh daughter, what's the matter with you? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? The orphan girl said, Allah's apostle was in, has invoked curse upon me. Poor girl. I mean, this is an orphan. How can you do that to an orphan girl, man? And you call this the best example? Can you imagine? Can you imagine a, a 15, at least 54-year-old man wishing death upon an orphan girl? And they call this the final prophet? You truly, you Muslimin truly have no shame. You have no honor, you have no dignity. Honest to God. Allah's apostle invoked curse upon me that I should not grow in age. He wants, to, he wants me to die. He just cursed me. And thus I would not grow in age. Or she said, in my length of life. Um Sulaim went out wrapping her headdress, hurried until she met. So Um Sulaim, she was, uh, you know, she was like, hey, why are you saying this? So she went to Muhammad. Muhammad, as a response, he said to her, Um Sulaim, ya Um Sulaim, ya Um Sulaim, what, why are you so angry? What is the matter with you? Muhammad uh, is asking Um Sulaim. She said, Allah's apostle, ya Muhammad. You invoked curse upon my orphan girl. How can you do that? How dare you, Ya Muhammad, to invoke a curse upon my orphan girl? Um Sulaim is saying. He said, Muhammad, now look at the response of Muhammad. Look at this evil son of Satan who they call a prophet. Um Sulaim, Ya Um Sulaim, what is that? She said, she, the orphan girl states, you have cursed her, Ya Muhammad, saying that she might not grow in age or grow in life. How can you do that to my orphan girl? Oh man, oh boy. Now look at the reaction of Muhammad. Now he starts to smile. <laughs> this is Muhammad. <laughs> this is Muhammad. <laughs> guy finds it funny. The guy, the, the guy finds it funny. Wow. And then he said, Ya Um Sulaim. Don't you know that I've made this term with my Lord? Don't you know that I made a contract with Allah? And term with my Lord is that I said to him, I am a human being and I am pleased just as a human being is pleased. And I lose temper. Brother, I lose temper, brother. Sometimes, you know, I lose temper. I'm Muhammad, I lose temper, brother. Just like any human being, but I'm not a prophet like you, Muhammad. You are supposedly the best of example. That's what Muslims call you. That's what one of your nicknames. The best of, of, of conduct, the pattern of conduct. Right, Ya Muhammad, that's what you are, according to the Muslimin. You are at the best of creation, according to the Ummah. So how can you do that? So for any, Muhammad continues. Now look at the filth of Muhammad. Look at this filthy guy. So for any person from amongst my Ummah, whom I curse, and he in no way deserve it, let that, O Lord, be made a source of purification. So brother, if I call you a son of a whore, if I am Muhammad and I call you a son of a whore, I am purifying you, brother. Allah will purify you, brother. If I insult you, if I curse you, a brother and Muslims left uh, dare to tell us, Rob Christian, why are you insulting my prophet? Well, uh, your prophet is a son of muta for doing this to people, man. Imagine, this is your mother, this is your daughter. One day, you, you, uh, Muhammad insults and curses your own mother. Would you accept that? Where's your dignity? But brother, this is the prophet. The prophet can do anything, brother. The prophet is special, brother. The prophet of Islam is a very special guy, brother. <sighs> is there any Christian who wants to go, guys? I want to, uh, maybe to take one call. Maybe we can take one call. Since we don't have any Mohammedan who would dare to call me life on air except this Isa. Eh, enough spanking. I'm not, I don't like to spank Isa more than this. Ah, we have brother Jacob. Hello, brother Jacob. Welcome. You're life on air. Long time no see. 
Master brother Raw, it, hey, it feels good. Hey, hey my friend, how are you? Long time no see, Jacob. I'm able to um to catch a live stream, man. It's been like, cause I'll be um I'll be looking, and sometimes I'll be like, man, when is um brother Raw, you know, going live again? When are you yeah. gonna like Christian again? Yeah, bro, I'm but really I'm I'm being really busy. So now and then, when I see I can go live, I will go live, man. I know, I know. Yeah. Please um, pray for me, I'll, my friend. Pray for me. Yes, I will. I will. And I and I um. I caught like um I, I woke up I woke up this morning and I, I seen you was on and I seen that you was on you just got off the phone with yeah. some Muslim and you and then I want to tell you something like he was talking about he was trying to act like you was being vulgar but you wasn't you was only reading what it says and on top of that when you read a song <laughs> Solomon yeah, when he was you, like yeah hey. did you catch it bro uh, brother Jacob I was uh, you know I was like you know what you you think you're smart wait you, you don't know you don't know who you're talking to I'm Rob Christian man. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I was saying those things because I knew he, he doesn't know about it, right? So I was yeah. like, I said, you know, your Allah is saying, your Allah is saying, your Allah is the one saying she is a cock-sucking whore. Your scholars are saying, no, no, brother, why are you using that language? Well, it's your Allah, it's your scholars, not me. <laughs> yeah, and, and, when, and, and when he asked you, um, wow. would you say that in front of Jesus? Then I was thinking to myself, like, Okay, if you want to ask him that question, then what about when you read the song of Solomon? Yeah, if Jesus asked me, if Jesus asked me, Rob Kushan, why, why did you say it? I will say, uh, oh my Lord, oh my Savior, I was only reading this Muslim sources. Yeah. So I said, what's your problem? Is is yeah, it is it too insulting to read your Muslim sources? Exactly. That would be like him asking you, would you read the song of Solomon in front of Jesus? Yeah. Of course, when, it's, when it has like graphic details, Yes, I was. So you you didn't do anything wrong. He was just doing that, trying to get around the issue. But anyway, I want to share something with you because um, I saw you brought up a hadith about, and I like to stay on subject when I call in. I saw you bring up a hadith about um, mm -hmm. Jabril coming to um Muhammad's house, and then you. Oh yeah, up. Musnad Abi yeah. Hanifa. Yeah, here it's on the screen, brother. That. Yeah. Okay. And you had brought up that verse, and you said you wonder why um a lot of Christians don't don't bring that up. Yes, and I was like, yeah, that, he's making a good point. And um, mm -hmm. you showed Hadith about Jabril yeah. entering the house, but it did. He didn't come in because it had a statue. Yeah, he had but idols. I'm, Allah, Allah's yeah. apostle, Allah's Rasul, Muhammad. Look what it says. There was a curtain wall in the house of the Prophet of Allah, which there was in statues, idols. So Jabril stayed away for a while. Why? If we read, if you continue reading, it says, "What made you stay away, Ya Jibril? Muhammad is asking Jibril now. He, Jibreel, said, we do not enter a house where dogs or statues are in. You're committing shirk, basically, he's saying to him, right? Decapitate what? the heads of these idols, Ya Muhammad, and then I will come and visit you. And this is Musnad Abi Hanifa, page 589, right? Right. This is Sunnah. Uh, sometimes people only think that only what is on sunnah.com is basically the sunnah, the tradition, and the teaching of Muhammad. No! All the books, all the books that are about the sunnah, that describes the life of Muhammad and so on, these are all accepted. There are tons and tons of books that many people don't know about, right? And this is one right. of them. And But, I, I want to I wanna share one with you, Brother Rob, and it goes along with um, the one that you showed, but this one Brother Rob is is very devastating because it proves that Jabril was an angel of Satan. We already know that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I can show you a hadith that proves without a shadow of a, of a doubt, and the Muslims can't say anything about it. Mm. Can you can you pull this hadith up? Okay, from Sunnah.com or? Yes, sir. Okay. Sunnah.com. Can you maybe send me the link? Is that possible, or that would be much uh, easier if you can send it on? On Skype as a link, that would be awesome, bro. Is that possible okay. or it's too much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, do that. Um, it's much easier than for me to look it always up, you know? Yeah. Um, copy link. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm about this. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I do it while I'm, I'm on the phone? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can. That would be a problem. Yeah. Okay, I see oh. that you're typing. That's perfect. Okay. Okay, perfect. <coughs> okay, it's already on the screen. Okay, go ahead. You want to read it, bro? Yes, sir. I'll read it. Okay. And it says, um, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, 
Jabril made a promise with the messenger of Allah to come at a definite hour. That hour came, but he did not visit him. Mm -hmm. There was a staff in the hand of the messenger of Allah. He threw it from his hand and said, never does Allah back out of his promise, nor do his messengers. Mm -hmm. Then he noticed a puppy under his bed and said, mm -hmm. O oh, Aisha, when did this dog enter? She said, by Allah, I don't know. He then commanded that it should be turned out. No sooner than had they expelled it, Jabril came and the messenger of Allah said to him, you promised to visit me. Mm -hmm. I waited for you, but you did not come. Whereupon he said, the dog kept me from coming. We do not enter a house in which there is a dog or a picture. Did you now, catch it? Did you catch it? How how this hadith actually agrees with Musnad uh, yeah. Abi Hanifa hadith that we showed earlier, yeah. right? And the yeah. picture here, you know, you have multiple versions, but this, you know, there are many hadith that are accepted and are sahih. And the that the one earlier was talking about statues, and here you see they have picture, but they are actually referring about statues. It's a statues. Yeah. Yes, and I and I want to highlight something. Yeah. That that we have looked over a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Now, if any Muslims are in the chat, if you're listening, notice where Muhammad said, never does Allah back out of his promise, nor do his messengers. Mm -hmm. This is very vital because yeah. later on in the Hadith, you're going to see where... Allah did not keep his promise, right? <laughs> Yeah. Later on, you're going to see um, where Jabril came and the messenger of Allah said to him, you promised to visit me. Yeah. I wait for you, but you did not come. Ah, now, we have a contradiction. Yeah. No, no, no. Muhammad just he no? just verified that Jabril is not a messenger of Allah. Because ah, he said, I see why you get yeah. back out of his promise. Mm. Nor do he. That's a so good point. Muhammad, Muhammad basically gave the criteria of what is a messenger of Allah. Yes. One. Never. It says never. Exactly. It said never do we back out of his promise. Ah. And then see where he told Jabril, I waited for you, but you did not come. Therefore, yeah. broke his promise. And that means Jabril is disqualified as being a true angel. Therefore, yes. Jabril is an angel of Satan, like we've always exactly. been saying. And, and, and uh, 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 please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Was there any true angel in the Bible that visited anyone and started to choke them nearly to death, like Muhammad? Squeeze the life out of them, like Muhammad? <coughs> so no, no, right? Brother Jacob, no, right? No, it no. Never. Why is that? Because, because an angel always comes with peace. He always right. says, peace to you. Oh, always Mary, for example, peace to you. He didn't say choke uh, the life out of uh, Mary. He didn't choke the life out of Hagar. You remember when Hagar was in the desert? Right. He did. Why Muhammad was almost killed by Jibreel? Read! Iqra! Iqra! I cannot read! Iqra! <laughs> Right, almost choking him to death. This makes sense, right? Because if if he if Muhammad said that angels mm -hmm. never back out the promise, so when it, so when we tell the Muslims that that was a demon in the cave of Hira, they can't say anything now because now we have the hadith where they, where their prophet yes. made it clear that angels don't back out of their promise. Yeah, J brother Jacob, can you again in a nutshell? Can you explain to the audience what you're trying to say? So that they can catch it again. Okay. To the audience, this is what I'm saying. When you read the Hadith, it says, Jabril made a promise with the messenger of Allah to come at a definite hour. The hour came, but he did not visit. Them. So it's like if the mailman told you that they was going to come to your house at 8 o'clock and then at 8 a.m., at 8 a.m., and when 8 a.m. come and then it turns 9 a.m., if the mailman doesn't show up, that means the mailman didn't fulfill his promise so then let's say if the mailman comes to you at 901 and then you tell the mailman you didn't show up on time like um you promised me and then if the mailman makes an excuse and say well the reason why we didn't 
uh, show up, Mr. So-and-so, is because you got a pit bull running around in the front yard. So I had to call the, um, the, the dog patrol because I was afraid I might get bit by the pit bull. So basically, that's what Jabril, that's what his excuse was for the reason why he was late. But Muhammad nullified that excuse because he said, never does Allah back out of his promise, exactly. nor do his messengers. So or, this or brother J Jacob, or we can conclude that Allah is an, an, a deceiver, a liar. If you're yes. going to go by that other argument, exactly. Yes, because yeah. Allah is the one who sends the angels. The angels don't have a free will in Islam. So it, so ultimately, it's the blame is on Allah, ultimately, yeah. because he is the, the, the best. He made the a promise, planet. right? According to yeah. Muhammad, he's the one promising. So he, Muhammad broke, uh, Muhammad's Allah broke his promise because Jibreel is too scared of puppies right. and statues and pictures. Yeah. So, so this makes Allah become a liar, and we know that yeah. God cannot lie. That's so close. not only does it prove that Jibreel is of Satan, it also proves yeah. that Allah is a yeah. liar. Like, the, like in the Bible, we can find God is not a human so that he lie. Exactly. Exactly. You see? So this is exactly. Very, very, very excellent point, Brother Jacob. Can you, do you want to add something else on top of this? Or? Yeah. Yes, I got I got one more. All right. It's in line with what you were talking about. Excellent, excellent. And it proved that Muhammad was an idol worshiper. I'm gonna show you something that a lot of Muslims haven't even mm -hmm. haven't even seen before. And I'm gonna send you the link. All and right. it proves without a shadow of a doubt that um Muhammad is a idol worshiper. All right. Okay, I'm about to um mm -hmm. I'm about to send you the link right now. All right, bro. Take your time. I uh when it's okay, in, just, I'm going to put it on I'll the screen for you. In, I know everybody be listening. I only got one shot. <laughs> Say it right. Yeah. Really, I mi I missed I missed your call, bro. It's I know it's a long time. Uh, sometimes it's really hard for me to go live, but when I can, guys, I always say, when I can go live, I will go live. But you know, I'm really busy. But it is always a blessing to have our brothers here, uh, brother Jacob or sister Finesse, all of you who call me. Thank you. Uh, okay, here's the hadith that you are right. asking for. All right. It's on the screen. Okay. All right. It is narrated on the authority of Amarul. Uh, I ain't going to read all that. It's too difficult to pronounce. Um, Umar bin al-Khattab, who said, mm -hmm. I heard the messenger of Allah uh -huh. say, actions are judged by motives. So each man will have what he intended. Thus, he whose migration, Hijra, was to Allah and his messenger, his migration is to Allah and his messenger. Mm -hmm. But he whose migration was for some worldly thing he might gain or for a wife he might marry, his migration is to that for which he migrated. Mm -hmm. Now, this proves that Muslims worship Muhammad because in Islam, a deed, a good deed is also a form of worship. Any good deed is a form of worship. And as you see, it says that whoever hijra or migration was to Allah and his messenger. Yeah. So you see, they, you can't separate Allah from Muhammad, right? Muhammad and Allah must always be business partners in crime, right? Yes. Yeah. So it says... Whoever's my um, Hijra migration was to Allah and his messenger. So it's saying mm -hmm. your good deed, which is a form of worship, is saying whoever's good, whoever good deed was to mm -hmm. Allah and his messenger, then that person performed a good deed. Exactly. And then if, if your um, migration was to some worldly thing, then you, you performed a, a materialistic deed, which mm -hmm. isn't a good deed. Yeah. So this uh, this is idol worship in oh. Islam, flat in your face. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, Emma, Islam is nothing but a cult created by Muhammad, right? And uh, when you're going to be a cult leader, there's going to be a point in the life of such a cult leader that he would love to be worshipped by his cult members. Any cult, pick any cult. You will see in the end, either he's, he created that cult for sexual desires, for power, lust, and to be worshipped. And we see everywhere traces here and there 
in the Quran, in the Sunnah, that Muhammad loved to be worshipped. For example, chapter, if we go to the Quran, guys, let me show you, brother Jacob, I think you know about this uh, ayah. But here, Muhammad made it clear that he wanted to be worshipped. Watch. This is Quran. Muslims can say this is da'if or we reject any hadith uh, that, uh, you know, exposes our prophet. Here. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Now what does that mean? I'm not sure if this is a good translation. Uh, I don't think so, but here. It says, you have to believe in Muhammad and his messenger. Now according to the Arabic grammar rules, when you have words that come after the last person, in this case Muhammad, all the words go back to the last person and the last person alone. In this case, Muhammad. So you have to respect and honor Muhammad. You have to assist Muhammad in battle. You have to honor and respect him. And you have to glorify, you have to do tasbih, subhan, tasbih to Muhammad every <coughs> morning and evening. You have to, yeah, this says purify, but it's bad translation. You have to Glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. That's what the ayah is saying. Yeah. This is crystal clear worship of Muhammad. Now, Muslims who, who love to, Brother Jacob, Muslims who love to sugarcoat the problem, you know, I always call it uh, sugarcoat, sugarcoating. They will say, no, no, it's, it goes back to Allah. But wait a second. The word is, what to azziruhu. What to azziruhu means, what to Aziru means in the Arabic, uh, if let us let us go to uh, uh, to any tafsir. I don't care any tafsir. We see. Uh, let's see if I can put it on the screen, guys. Just a second. Let's see. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay, here. Let me put it here on the screen. Here is tafsir al-Qurtubi for the same ayah. See tafsir al-Qurtubi for chapter forty-eight, ayah nine. لِتُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوا You have to assist him. Now, why is this for Muhammad? Why the ayah already proves uh, it's for Muhammad? Because Allah does not need assistance in battle. Remember, this is talking about when Muhammad is in battle. So you have to assist Muhammad while fighting. You have to honor Muhammad and you have to glorify Muhammad. Tasbih is act of worship. Bukratan wa asila, meaning every morning and evening. If I went to Tafsir al-Qurtubi, and this is Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said, you fight with him with this sword, meaning you have to assist Muhammad in battle. One plus one, <laughs> assist Muhammad, honor Muhammad, and glorify Muhammad the Rasul every morning and evening. Bam! Brother Jacob. Hey, that's, that's devastating. Hey, Brother Rob, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead, bro. Are you knowing that hadith, that um, the divine commencement or the inspiration, and it and it mentions waraka, because I don't know Arabic, so I got a question. Waraka ibn Ufil, when when Khadija took Muhammad to waraka, you mean that one? Yes, but in his full name it says yeah. Uza yeah. and Uza. Yeah, so he does was, that mean yeah. that he's the daughter of that mean a slave of Uza? Yes, waraka, 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 like any. Person in in, uh, in Mecca, they were all worshippers of idols. So he's, he was one of the he was a worshipper of one of the daughters of Allah, Abdul Uzza, meaning the slave of Al Uzza. Remember, Allah Al Uzza wal Manat are the three daughters of Allah. So, like any <laughs> mushrik, who do they call them mushrikin, they worshipped idols. Like Muhammad, like Muhammad's father, like Muhammad's mother Amina, they were all worshippers of of idols. Basically, indirectly, Satan, right? Because when you worship idols, you're worshiping Satan. Exactly. What so, about the Waraka, bro? What do you wanna? So that the name, because when when yeah. I go to this, like I'm looking at it right now, it says, um, yeah, Waraka bin Nofu bin Assad bin Abdul Uzza. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if I, just if you Google it, brother, ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him. You will get the full name basically. Waraka ibn Nufil ibn Asad ibn Abdul Uzza. Yeah, and I put it in the live chat too. Exactly. Abdul Uzza meaning the slave of Al Uzza. So this means the so this means the Muslims 
they got the clarification that Muhammad was a prophet from a pagan idol worshiper. Of course. Wow. Yeah. Remember, That's even if, if you go to the Sahih Bukhari hadith, and I can try to put it on the screen just a second, bro. If we uh, go there, you'll see that Muhammad, he, when he went to cave Hira, 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 you know, he used to worship Allah. Remember, Allah is what? Allah is one of the idols of Mecca. Muhammad's Allah, when he used to worship Allah, before Islam, he worshipped Allah. Allah is not, not a new God, guys. Look, I think I found it. Okay, let me put it on the screen. Guys, look, re read with me. If we go to the hadith, we see here. Narrated Aisha, the commencement of the divine inspiration to Allah's Messenger was in the form of good dream, blah, blah, blah. And he, uh, he used to worship Allah. He used to go in seclusion. Read with me, uh, Brother Jacob. Muhammad used to go in seclusion in the cave of Hira. Hira. <laughs> where he used to worship Allah. The idol Allah before Islam. So Muhammad worshipped Allah as a nice little mushrik. Do you see it? He didn't know Quran. He didn't know, uh, you know. How, how could Muhammad know that this, uh, this Allah is... Uh, are you saying that there are different Allahs? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we have Allah 1.0. We have Allah 2.0. There are many Allahs, brother. But this is the same Allah, right? Do you see it? Wow. So Muhammad was a pagan. If you go to chapter... Let me prove it. If you go to chapter 9, uh, 93. And I mentioned this in the beginning of my live show. If you go to chapter 93, I... Uh, uh, this bad translation. Just let me... Change it. Wondering what is that? Just a second. Hilali Khan maybe. Ah, here. Look what Allah is saying to Muhammad. Meaning, he, he, Allah, found you lost, unaware, lost of the Quran. The meaning of Dallan means lost, literally. He found you lost and he guided you. So who guided Allah, uh, Muhammad? Allah, because Muhammad was a mushrik. He was like the same mushrik as his family. His family were all mushrikeen. And if you go <coughs> to the tafsir, go to any tafsir, tafsir al-tabari, any, any tafsir, you will see that he was this uh, like his, uh, his qawm, qawm meaning nation. His nation was, were unbelievers. They were mushrikeen. They used to worship idols like his uh uh, his nation, he worshipped idols. Any tafsir, my friend. Yeah. Okay, I got a question too. Yeah. About that same hadith we were just speaking about. Mm -hmm. Um, the one you are you reading the one that says um not the narrated Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, the commencement of the divine inspiration. Yeah, yeah it's on the screen. Okay, okay. When you go down, brother Rob, yeah. and when it gets to the part that says, um. It says, read in the name of your Lord yes. who has... Yeah, here, here uh, Jibreel starts to squeeze Muhammad. <laughs> squeezing him like a grape, yeah, in Cave Hira. You see where it says, um, read in the name of your yeah. Lord who yeah. has created all that exists. Does it say that in the Arabic? Because if it does, that creates a huge problem. In the mm -hmm. Arabic, does it, says, does it say all that exists? Read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists. Yeah. Doesn't uh, say that. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Iqra. Yeah, it says Iqra. Qala ma ana biqari. Read. So this demon, right, this creature starts to squeeze him. He says to him, Iqra. Read. Qala ma ana biqari. I cannot read. Muhammad says, I cannot read. Then he's. Uh, then it says that he starts to, you know, uh, squeeze the hell out of him. Then it says. Uh, uh, and, and he repeats that, uh, read, I cannot read, read, I cannot read. Uh, then he, he says, uh, he starts to choke him. And then it says, uh, again, the, uh, everything needs to do, uh, to be happened three times. All right. And then, so basically this is the Quran, right? Read in the name of your Lord. He created uh, the human. Mankind, human, from blood clot. Halak means blood clot. 
So it so it doesn't say all that exists in the Arabic, or did they just put that in the parentheses? Yeah, in the they English? put that they put that in this false translation. Oh, okay, so it it doesn't say that in the Arabic. No. Okay, yeah, okay. <clears throat> they always add, right? They always add, unfortunately. Because yeah, if it did, if it would have said that, I was hoping that it did say that. In the Arabic. No, it's it literally says here. It's they are basically quoting the Quran, right? It's Quran. This part here is Quran. I think if you can click, no. if you click on it, you go to Quran. If I'm not, no, it's not working. No. It's not working. No. <laughs> what else is new? Yeah. They they say it says he didn't say read. Did he, what what is does it say? Does it say read or recite? When it's used that word, Iqra it, literally means read. Rattul, okay. if you say in Arabic rattul, you that means you, you you basically a hymen, right? You are you know what a hymen is? That's what yes. tartil. Tartil means you are uh, singing. But the, the Arabic word iqra means literally read. Read. Recitation because remember, here is why it is reading. Here is why. It literally means reading iqra. Here is why. Because if Jibril is telling Muhammad, guys take notes, please. If Jibreel is commanding Muhammad to recite, Muhammad first needs to memorize what he needs to recite, right? But here there's no uh, memorization happening. He is forcing him immediately to read. How can Muhammad recite if he did not memorize it by heart? Are you catching it, uh, Jacob? Yes, that makes sense. I never thought so of again, it. So like again, again guys, how can Muhammad recite if he did not memorize the ayah yet. This is the first ayah. Read. Jibril is commanding him. Squeezing him. Read. I cannot read. Read. Let me squeeze you. Right? Read. So how can this be a recitation while Muhammad did not memorize it yet? He, this is the first time that he is getting supposedly Quran, right? Right. All right. So what was he asking him to read? Was he holding a... a uh, a scroll or a sheet of paper or something? Well, basically, Muhammad is saying, I cannot read because there's nothing to read from. Ma'ana biqari means also, I cannot read because there's nothing to read from. So, Muhammad is literally saying, how can I read if there's nothing to, uh, to read from? He's forcing him to read, uh, uh, Jibreel, brother, are you a donkey or what? If Muhammad, but again, if Muhammad was, uh, if, if, Allah, if there is something called Allah, and Allah claims to be God, he would have, made a miracle to re to allow Muhammad to read. Maybe put something on paper or on a, on a stone tablet. But Muhammad literally saying, how can I read if there's nothing to read from? Right. Which is crazy. Read what? There's nothing to read. Which is crazy because if Jibril was the messenger angel, the Quran already says that Muhammad was illiterate. So when did he, when did he have uh, already known uh, that Jibril there is nothing. There is nothing called uh, literate because if we go to an, uh, to, uh, to another hadith, Sahih Bukhari, we can see that Muhammad is asking for pen and paper, right? Writing material to write for you, right? Not go astray, right? Let me show it on the screen, guys. Muhammad is literally asking for pen and paper. Here. Only I'm only using the search engine on the same website, bro. Here to write, not astray. That's what I typed. Narrated Ibn Abbas, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 7366. When the time of the death of Prophet approached, so Muhammad is about to eh, 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 die, right? While there were some men in the house, among them as was Umar ibn Khattab, Umar ibn al-Khattab. The Prophet said, come near me, come near, let me write for you a writing. Uh oh Muhammad wants to write. Let me write for you a writing after which you will never go astray. Uh oh Right, and then we continue reading. May he write for you. All right, right, right. Muhammad wants to write. <laughs> How can Muhammad be illiterate, literally illiteral, if he wants to write? Maybe Muhammad was get, getting crazy, brother. What do you think? And, and brother, and brother, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, <laughs> going back to that hadith, I, I, the one about um the commencement. Yeah. If you read the last part. Wouldn't this prove that Muhammad is not the last messenger? Because from what from my understanding, what I'm reading, mm. Warwick, he makes a prophecy yeah. before he does. If yeah. you go to the last yeah, paragraph. Here, 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 look what it says, my friend. Look what it says. Uh, you're correct. 
Khadija then accompanied him to the co- to her cousin Waraka. So uh, Khadija brings Muhammad to her cousin Waraka ibn Nufu. Same Waraka ibn Nufu. You see, bin Asad bin Abdul Uzza. That's his uh, last name. He was he was a slave of Uzza, who during the pre-Islamic period. Now look at the deception here, bro. Waraka during the pre-Islamic period before Islam, he became a what? What does it say there, bro? It's a Christian. That's a false translation, because the Arabic says Fatanassar, Nasara, Fatanassar. He became an Asrani, so they lie and call it a Christian. That's lie number one. <laughs> Go to the Arabic, and you'll see what I'm what I'm saying. It doesn't say Masihi, Fasara Masihi. No, he Fatanassar. He became an Asrani. False translation, guys. Take notes. And Waraka used to write the writing with Hebrew letters, so he could re- read and write Hebrew. That's not not the only uh, language. Look what Waraka could do more. He would write from the Gospel in Hebrew, as much as Allah wished him to write. Okay, now they added Hebrew. There's nothing called Hebrew in the Arabic. They are adding what's not there. I believe it was Aramaic. So Waraka could write, read and write Aramaic. They say here in the false translation Hebrew, it doesn't say that in Arabic. As much as Allah wished him to write. Question, Brother Jacob. How does Waraka ibn Nufl know that Allah wants him to write? If he's not a prophet. In the time of Muhammad. Mm, good, 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 good analysis. Again, again, guys, how is Muhammad the only messenger in his time? If Waraka is receiving divine command, divine inspiration from Allah to write the gospel in a different language too. So that Muhammad, you see how Muhammad had access to the gospel? Because of Waraka. Waraka was translating for him. Muhammad was plagiarizing from the gospel and make it Quran. You see it? And and then, and then brother bro, it says, when you read down, it yeah. says, he was an old man and had lost his eyesight. Yes. So that means he was blind. Yes. Okay, and Khadija said to Warwick, listen to the story of your nephew. Okay, I want to skip past all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about the part where it says, Allah's messenger asks, will they drive me out? So yeah, wait, asking, before we go there, bro, I need to make, I need okay. to show the lie. How many lines did we already expose here in the false translation? Anyway, look what it says here. This is the same one who keeps the secrets Angel Jibreel. There's nothing called Angel Jibreel. You see it? It's in between brackets. From Allah had sent him. If we go to the Arabic, it says, what? Namus. Namus. So <laughs> basically what Waraka is saying to Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, this is the same Namus, the law, the Mosaic law, or if you want to say it's the Torah, I don't mind. The Mosaic law, maybe the 613 Mosaic laws or the Torah, whom Allah has sent to Moses. Do you see how they lie in the translation? Calling namus, the word namus, guys, means law, literally. Namus means law. How did law became an angel? You filthy liars. Shame on you for mistranslating the Arabic. But what else is in there? So it doesn't say no Jabril. No, it says namus. Let's see if we can find it. Guys, just a second. Here, the word... Uh, for Waraka here, Wakana Amra Tanasar, he became an Asrani. You see, Tanasar, Tanasara. So uh, Waraka became a Nasrani, Tanasar, not Masihi. Filthy liars. If we scroll down, let's see if I can find that part. Namus, uh, I'm looking for the. Annamusu, uh, here. هذا الناموس الذي نزل الله على موسى. Uh-huh. If we copy this part, this 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 word here, and I simply go to Google Translate. Google Translate. Yeah, sucking. Remember sucking? Sucking whore. Who Allah calls whores of jinn. Yeah. The law. الناموس. The law. The law. I'm the law. <laughs> <laughs> so how became how how did the law became angel? Can you explain that to me, brother Jacob? <laughs> I want to learn. <laughs> that's that's the that's the biggest fabrication of. Wow! Of Do you see how they lie in the translation, bro? Trying to convince everybody in the English, brother Muhammad did have an angel. No, Muhammad never was never visited by an angel. Muhammad 
was visited by a demon. That's what Muhammad said the very first time. He said, I feel as if a, a, a jinn is, uh, 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 touched me. He said, this is a jinn who touched me. But it was Khadija, his first wife, who convinced him, no, no, this cannot be a jinn because uh, else uh, he would watch the, the striptease. Remember, Khadija is taking off her clothes. She's asking him to sit on her lap. And then she takes her clothes off. And then the, the creature go away. And the assumption of Khadija is, hey, because he is too embarrassed to watch, it must, it cannot be a demon. It must be an angel. That's how Islam is created. Muhammad said literally in the Islamic books, I, f I was touched by a jinn. That's what he said. I was touched by a jinn. He confirmed it himself. And the first feeling is always right. Right, brother Jacob? Exactly. You go by that, that, that first initial instinct that's, exactly. that God given. Yeah. Now, now, to the second part of my question, when it, after... After it says um, it was the Namus, and then when you yeah. scroll down, it so, says... So someone need to call the, this website, the owner of this website, and tell him, if you're a Muslim, tell him, why are you lying to us? You are a filthy liar. You are fil filthy lying. You are lying to us. Give us at least a correct translation for the hadith. You filthy liar. Shame on you. Uh, go ahead, bro. Yes. If you, if you scroll down like to the ending, and it says... Um, Allah's messenger asked, and it says, he asked, will they drive me out? Yeah. Warica replied in the affirmative and said, any man who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with hostility. Yeah. And if I should remain alive to the day when you will be turned out, then I would support you strongly. Yeah. So my point is, all, um, Muhammad asked him a question about a future yeah. event in his life, and yeah. then Warwick prophesied that he would be turned out. Yeah. So isn't that Warwick being a prophet? Yeah. But didn't Muhammad yeah. Say no prophet between him and Jesus, but Warwick is clearly prophesying yeah. to Muhammad what happened. Yeah, and remember, Warwick is receiving divine revelation exactly like Muhammad supposedly, right? Uh, he's uh, he, Allah wants him to write, right, brother? Allah is w wants Waraka to write. And look, what you just said, I can add that to what I just said. You said he's receiving divine revelation because if the Muslims try to say, "Oh, this wasn't a prophecy," then you can't say that anything Muslim that um Waraka said can be validated. It had to be divine yeah. revelation in order for your Islamic claim yeah. to mean anything. Mm. It has to be divine. Yeah. And, and as something else I want to point out. Yeah. It says that Warwick was a blind yeah. old man. Mm. But in the Shahada, the Muslims say that um, bear witness. Yeah. Do you bear witness that um, Muhammad is this, this, and that? But how can you bear witness to something and you are blind? Yeah. You can't even see it. So how did Warwick know that he was actually even talking to Muhammad? What if what if it was a trick? Like mm. in the Bible, you know, like Jacob and Esau, yeah. and his father had grew old and he couldn't see. Yeah. So you got the same thing. How do we know that all of this is just something Khadija and Muhammad orchestrated? Because Warwick is blind. Yes, of course. He can't see. How do you, how does he even know that? Muhammad is standing before him. He's blind. Yeah. Yeah. He can't see him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's the Muslims are building a claim mm. upon a blind man's testimony. Yeah. Uh, my friend, you know the thing is, if we read Islamic sources carefully, we see before Muhammad becoming a prophet, Khadija, that was her wish for Muhammad to become a prophet. So by the money by the money of Khadija. Remember, she's the wealthiest woman. She's the boss of Muhammad. <laughs> she's the wealthiest woman. With her money and status, she made Muhammad a prophet. With her money, with her status, with her nobility, right? She's a, a woman from a no, the, 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 the richest uh, house of Mecca, right? She is the richest. She's filthy rich. So she can do that, right? And she helped Muhammad. It's her husband. And he became a prophet. With the help of Waraka and another guy, Rahib Buhaira, the monk Buhaira. 
right? They taught him from the Torah, they taught him from the Injil, and that's how Muhammad could create and fabricate the ayahs in the Quran, right? And you see, and, and why, why did Muhammad became suicidal? Because if we go to a different hadith, also from Sahih Bukhari, but a longer version, we see that uh, when, when Waraka died, right? When Waraka died, let's see, but after a few days, Waraka died and the divine inspiration, uh, I mean demon inspiration, was also paused for a while and the prophet became so sad, brother, I'm sad. Brother, I'm Muhammad, I'm sad. He became so sad as we have heard that intended several times <laughs> to throw himself from the mountaintops. Wow. And every time Muhammad was to end his own life, he went up on the mountain to throw himself down. Uh, brother, it's me, Jibreel. Don't do it, brother. <laughs> oh, Muhammad, you're indeed. <laughs> Look at this story, man. You are indeed Allah's messenger in truth. And every time Muhammad wants to jump, Jibril comes, and, you know, and every time, many times, the, you know, Muhammad want, became suicidal many times. Please convince me that Muhammad was not a mentally ill person. Please, try to convince me. Okay, another question pops up in my mind. Yeah. Since you already verified that it says Namus yeah. and not Jibril, mm -hmm. that means... Muhammad, he wouldn't have had no understanding mm. about the hadith that you just read about him going to the mountaintop and proceeding to jump. And then yeah. an angel came and said, oh, Muhammad, I'm Jabril. Yeah. He wouldn't have known who Jabril is because we've already validated that it doesn't say Jabril. It says the Namus. Yeah. I mean, so even this in this the hadith, look, if I can do control F, right, search. And I put Namus here. It pops immediately. Do you see it? And Namus. So there's nothing called Jibril. It's the law. It's the law. And Namus. Look, I put it in Google Translate. And Namus. The law. You see it? So there's nothing called Jibril. There is nothing called Jibril. Waraka is only saying, you know what? This is the law that supposedly Allah sent to the Islamic Musa. So he's trying to tell Muhammad, Muhammad, you are basically receiving what uh, what 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 to uh, uh, basically the Quran yeah? in this case the Torah the law you are receiving the law it doesn't say Injil uh, sorry it doesn't say uh, 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 Jibril it doesn't say Malak the word for um, angel in Arabic is Malak where is the word Malak it doesn't say that it says Namus Wow Namus so Anzala ala Musa. Do you hear it? Again, guys, listen carefully. Hadha namusu, not malak. The word malak is angel. Hadha namusu ladhi anzala ala Musa. Did you catch it here? Copy, paste, copy. And we go to Google. Entire sentence. This is the law that was revealed to who? Moses. Did you see it? Did I lie? No. Well, well that means war collide then. When he said, this is the law, because Moses didn't receive no, no verses that said, read in the name of your Lord who created man from a clot. So that, that means Warwick, he lied then. Yeah, had namusu alladhi unzila. I said anzila. No, it's unzila. Sorry, guys. Unzila ala Musa. Yeah. Sometimes I read making, uh, I make reading mistakes. Sue me. <laughs> And, anyway, and, and I yeah. got, and here's my last question. I'm gonna be real quick because I know you gotta go, and, and yeah. I've been on, on it long enough. It's just one more question. Okay, yeah. when the Muslims say the Shahada, they say that you know that reference they use. They say Alhamdulillah, yeah. all praise is due to Allah. Yeah. When you go to the Quran, verse one. Mm -hmm. and the, the oh, second this is a good one. This is a good one. Watch, guys. Yeah, Watch what one. Brother Jacob is going to do. I hope he's going to do what I <laughs> have in mind. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. yeah, alhamdulillah, when, when, look, alhamdulillah, rabbal alameen. Yeah. Right, when you, when, you, when you go, and when you say, when they say alhamdulillah in the Quran, it doesn't have the Allah, so it's, it, they saying la, so when they say, should, when they say the shahada, yeah. shouldn't it be good enough to say there is no God but la, yeah. and Muhammad is his prophet? Yeah, that, that came, the shahada, my friend, the shahada, as Muslims now using it, 
it's not in the Quran, it's in the Hadith, right? So you won't find mm-hmm. it in the Quran, right? And remember, uh, here's another, I, I, I hope that you would bring this up, but it's, you brought something else. The name yeah. Muhammad, brother, the name Muhammad, Alhamd, Muhammad, Alhamd, what do you think it means, Muhammad? The praised one, right? Right. How can Muhammad be, call himself Muhammad if Alhamd, all praise is to Allah? How is the name of Muhammad not idolatry, blasphemy? How is it not shirk? Please explain to me that. Muhammad's name means what? Again, let me type it out. The praised one means Muhammad. Muhammad is not a name. It's a title, a divine title to be specific. So Muhammad, when he took the name, remember his name is Qatham, original name is Qatham, not Muhammad. Muhammad took a divine title, Muhammad, the praised one. He elevated himself to the equal status of Allah. Because Allah says, all praise, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Are you saying that, that Allah shares his praise with Muhammad? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Do you see how uh, Muhammad became the God of Islam? It, it, is Al, is Al a part of the name of Allah? Mind blown, Brother right? Al- Mind blown. <laughs> Is, is Al the part of um, Allah's name? Because you speak Arabic. No, I don't no, 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 no. It's only you, uh, El means the. El, this, this, and the first, second letter means the. The praise. The praise is to Allah. And Li means f- uh, to. La. Means, you know, La. This part. Right? La. So do li, I have. La. Uh, his name is Law. I need to get this solidified. Yeah. Now here is, uh, before I go there, I want you to listen to the Muslim counter argument. When we ask Muslims, why is it not Allah? They will say, you know, linguistically, Arabically speaking, and grammatically, oh, how do you say it? Grammatically speaking, you can't say Alhamdu li Allah. It doesn't sound right. Because other, if you go to other words and so on, they always uh, use li, li. Right? And shorten the, the last part. But wait, I have a surprise. <laughs> you Muslims always say, and how many times have you heard of Brother Jacob? There is nothing like Allah. Nothing is compared to Allah, right? So how are they comparing, let's say, a car or a, a mouse or any creation to Allah? So how is it okay to compare any words with Allah? No. And a Christian prince love to bring this up often. Exactly, he's right. It should have been Alhamdu li Allah, not li Allah, because Allah, uh, you can't you can't associate anything with Allah, right? Allah is different kind of being. Yes, Allah has hands, Allah has feet. He has he has a mouth. He can speak. He has hands because he uses his hand to uh, to create Adam, right? Uh, use uh, clay and with it on his hand, he uh, he it makes the shape of Adam. Remember? So how how is it possible? Yeah. How is it possible to associate created things with Allah? Right? This is this is a disaster on itself. Yeah. Are you there, bro? Yeah, so okay. it, so the A the A L the, the the L the all is not necessary for according, Allah. yeah, according to them, yeah, it's not necessary because yeah, clearly we can associate created things with the name of Allah because if we can do that lil uh, awla you know for anything anything you can use it right lil it's a, it's a common thing in the arabic grammar to use the word li li right and then shorten uh, uh, part of the word right grammatically speaking by how how can you do that with Allah remember muslims always tell us there's nothing like Allah that's what they always say right there's nothing li- like Allah so why why in the in the English translation? Why are they not putting it in English translation? All praises to La. At least translate it literally, right? If you want to share supposedly the truth with us, why are you not saying all praise is to La? At least be honest, right? Wow! So they worship La. That's their, that's the God La. Of course, because L. Again, L means 
I think you called in English the definite article. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Yeah. The definite article, L, the, and then la. So their God's name is la. Right? Wow, that concludes my... Um, and you know, call, and you know in I, the Quran, I have another thing, and many people don't know this. Remember, L, when you have something in, the, in, in a person in the Quran, any person, right, by name, you won't say, uh, uh, let's say, Al-Muhammad, right? You don't say Al-Muhammad, but let's, let me show you uh, a thing. If we go to chapter 9, for example, chapter 9, ayah 31, the famous one. Uh, just a second, let me get the correct translation for you. Uh, okay, here's the, here is my own correct translation. I don't trust any false translation. Here. Do you see Al here? Like Allah. Al, the Al Masih. This actually already proves when you see Al that uh, it's only for Allah. It's only for God, supposedly. So uh, Jesus Christ, Al Masih. Al Masih. Why? Al, Al. And as you see, the Arabic text also explains that uh, the true gods of the Quran are who? Allah and the Messiah. Look, they have taken their rabbis and their monks as gods besides Allah and the Messiah, the son of Maryam. So you should not worship your rabbis, Christians. You should not worship your monks. Only worship the real gods, the real Arbab, the lords, Allah and the Messiah. Bam. Even the Quran, evil, even the book of Satan must confirm that the Messiah is God. Amazing. Hey, it was good talking to you today. Um, Thank you for your minute. call, brother. Thank you for your call. Yeah, appreciate you answering all the questions. That was real good. Thank you well, for, thank you for uh, your input. Because of your input, my friend, we did some extra <laughs> extra destruction of Muhammad, the fake prophet, the fraud prophet of Islam. Thank you. Thank you for your inputs. All right. Talk to you later, brother Rob. All right, Jacob. Thank you for your call, brother. God bless you. Thank you for your call. Bye-bye. Bye. See you again. Wow, guys, that was amazing. Yeah, Sister Vanessa was right, guys. Last time she told me, you know, when we allow Christians to call, we get the input, and when, with that input, we can do more, more destruction uh, of Muhammad, right? We can expose Muhammad even more. I mean, sometimes I forgot things to add, uh, you know. Uh, but because of your input, like Brother Jacob here, we can do more damage to Muhammad, to Islam. Exactly. Uh, do we have any Muhammadan? Maybe he thinks we, we lied. I like when they say, Rob Krishna, you are a deceiver. It doesn't say that, RC. You lied, RC. It doesn't say that, RC. I love that when they say that. Don't you guys? <laughs> do we have any Muslim? Rob Krishna, you're finished. I'm going to end your career. I'm going to expose you, Rob. That's what Isa said. And then he got spanked without any mercy. <sighs> Guys, we had a debate with a Muslim. All right. So if you want to watch that part, you need to rewatch. If you just joined, you need to rewatch to enjoy the spanking. You need to rewatch today's live show. And guys, don't forget our admins will provide the timestamps uh, after the live show. So you need to wait for, I don't know exactly when the admins will be finished. But uh, our, brother she our brother Sheikh Umut, one of the admins, or C1, uh, or Debit Rai, one of them will provide the temp stamps. And if you want the sources, you need to wait for Phil Herrera, one of the other admins. He will add the sources that we used also in the comment section. So don't worry, <laughs> okay? We will try to work on the user experience, you know, so to make it easier for people who maybe missed the live show. And I hope more and more people will watch a missed live show, guys. I know uh, re-watching uh, uh, an old live show can be tiring or long, but guys, we are sitting here, not for ourselves. I'm only here to serve you, all right? I'm here to serve you. You don't need me, but if it's the plan of God for me to be here and be with you, to be 
you know, when I'm here, to, to be honest with you guys, yes, we don't know each other, but it's a blessing to be among my brothers and sisters. It's my honor to be with you guys, right? Because you are my brothers and sisters. I love you, and I really want to thank you. It's never enough to thank you for your support, for being here, for your financial support. So thank you so much, guys. I think uh, we should wrap this up uh, here, right here, right now. We're alive for, uh, for a long time. I want to say to the Muslims, Muslims, today we showed you more than enough proof, again, that Muhammad was nothing but a fake prophet, a fraud prophet. All of his teaching is filth. We showed you what he called women in Islam. Women, Muslim women, women like your mother, sisters and daughters. Qahba, a whore. Chapter 56, ayah 37. We showed you that Muhammad was a worshiper of idols. Chapter 74, ayah 5. Allah needs to tell Muhammad over and over. Ya Muhammad, stop worshipping idols, you filthy mushrik. Even Muhammad's Allah called Muhammad a mushrik. Do you see it? It's in front of you. Over and over. And we showed you the translation for tafsir, bin, sorry, tafsir al-Tabari for the same chapter, same ayah. And stop worshipping idols, Ya Muhammad. Wal-awthan fahjur ibadatiha wa truk khudmatiha. That's what we can find in tafsir al-Tabari for the meaning of warrucha fahjur. Right? Stop worshipping idols and stop giving service to these idols, Ya Muhammad. Allah is saying to Muhammad. And Muslims love to tell us, no, no, Muhammad never committed shirk, brother. Muhammad never became a mushrik. No, no, no. No, but the Quran says different. Egbert <laughs> uh, uh, programmer says, can we ask a simple, a small question? Do three daughters well prove that Allah is the moon god? Uh, well, yes. Egbert programmer. According to the Muslim sources, the Quraysh, the Quraysh of Mecca, they used to worship Allah. And remember, we showed from Sahih al-Bukhari that Muhammad himself, before Islam, he worshipped Allah in cave Hira. Muhammad worshipped Allah, the moon idol, idol, the supreme moon idol. The Quraysh worshipped Allah as the supreme moon idol. And the daughters of Allah, Alat, Al-Uzza, wal Manat, they were bird idols. Right? Bird idols, crane bird idols, crane idols. Let me try to explain what the crane idols are, guys. Uh, just a second before we go, guys. Uh, pa, pa, pa. This is a crane idol, right? So, according to the Quraysh, right? Alat al Uzza wal Manat are crane idols. And they actually. Unified, remember, Tawheed is not a new thing. Tawheed means unification, right guys? Tawheed, Tawheed means unification. Unification, it has nothing to do with uh, oneness. The literal meaning of Tawheed is unification. So, the Quraysh of Mecca, the tribe of Muhammad, they unified Allah, Al-Uzza, wal manat with Allah. And uh, those daughters of Allah, they used to fly and take the prayers of the Quraysh to Allah, the moon idol. So basically, Allah al Uzza wal Manat are pray delivers of prayers. The Quraysh prays to Allah, and those and then they and they ask the idols, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, the bird idols, to intercede for them. Right, intercede for them to Allah. Did you catch it? Here, uh, can I put something important on the screen? Can I, can I? I think I can. Bear with me, guys. Okay. What I'm basically trying to say is this, guys. Mecca before Islam, and we taught this before on an other live show. I brought this up many times. Mecca before Islam, the Quraysh of Mecca, the tribe of Muhammad, already practiced Tawheed. Unification. Yes, they did. Even that Muhammad stole. Muhammad stole the concept of Tawheed, meaning unification. To unify. The Quraysh worshipped Allah as the supreme moon idol, as I explained. Muhammad stole the same Allah that he already worshipped before Islam and made this idol Islamic under a new Islamic umbrella. 
the Quraysh had intercessors. They were idols. They used to intercede, and those idols were called Allah al Uzza wal Manad. They used to intercede for the Quraysh to Allah. They used to carry the prayers as the crane bird idols that they are. These are the satanic verses that Muhammad delivered to the Quraysh, remember? These are the bird cranes, Muhammad said. These are the bird cranes. And their intercession is hoped for. That's what Muhammad said to the idols of Mecca. Sorry, to, to the Quraysh of Mecca. And the Quraysh were really happy with the satanic verses of, that Muhammad gave to them from Satan. Remember? Their intercession is hoped for. Intercessors. So they were intercessors. That was their job. So the Quraysh used to unify their bird idols, the intercessors, with Allah. This is why it makes sense why it means unification. Unifying the intercessors with the supreme one idol, Allah. Muhammad did the same. But what did he change? He only changed the intercessors. Do you see? It's on the screen. Muhammad removed the original Allah al al Manad. He destroyed the idols and made himself <laughs> an intercessor. He made the Quran. Remember, on the day of judgment, the Quran, Muhammad himself will intercede for the Muslims to Allah. The Quran will do that. He will become like a pale man. Remember the hadith? The Quran will become like a perfect pale man, a white man. And will intercede for the Muslims. And the black stone will have a mouth. And will intercede. So do you see why, what Muhammad did? Copy paste. Plagiarizing. Only changing the intercessors. And that's Islam guys. Basically Islam is nothing but a pagan unified cult. But under a new Islamic umbrella. Same. What's the difference? Show me the difference. Only the intercessors are the difference. You see it? Take a screenshot, guys. Always remind yourselves, Islam is a pagan cult. Muhammad only changed the intercessors. Copy-paste. Tawheed does not mean oneness, guys. It means unification. Let me give you an example. Ana awahid. Here, let us go to Google Translate. You're right? Let's see if I'm lying. If I remove this, English to Arabic, okay? I unify... Uh, Wife with if I if I'm a priest, guys, I'm a priest or an imam. Okay, I unify a wife with her husband. What does it say? Ana uh, It comes out of funny, but ana awahid. <laughs> tawheed, awahid, tawheed. Tawheed is noun. Tawheed is the noun, right? Tawheed is the noun. The verb is awahid, awahid. <laughs> The verb. <laughs> I unify a wife with her husband to become one, right? To become one. You become one, right? As a um, uh, husband and wife. It comes out a little bit funny, but you get the idea. Awahid. Awahid is zawja bi zawjiha. Awahid. I unify. How is uh, how how does it mean oneness? How does this mean oneness? Uh, this is really, yeah, but you get the idea. Awahid. To unify. To unify. Littawheed. Littawheed. Google Translate is funny, but. Wahid. Yeah, yeah. Unite, unify. Unite, you see? Tawheed. Tawheed. Autism. <laughs> Google Translate is really funny, man. Unite, unify. You see? You get the idea. Tawheed. Tawheed. Unify to unite. Tawheed. 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 You see how they lie even about the most important doctrine, guys? You see how they lie about the most important doctrine? It does not mean oneness. It means unification. To unify something with something else. At least two things. Allah with his three intercessors. Tawheed existed. 
Allah existed before Islam. Before Islam. Muhammad only changed the intercessors. Right? To himself, the Quran and the black stone. Bam! <laughs> and guys, by this, we conclude our today's live show. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I hope I answered your question, my friend, in the live chat. Thank you for your amazing support, guys. Without you, we cannot do this. Please share our videos all over social media. Please. I hope it's not too much asked. Share the links on social media. Share our videos. If you cannot download or translate in your own language, at least share. Okay? Help me to help you. To help as much as lost souls, these poor Muslims, from their pagan cult. And I hope and I pray to God to... Allow them to be guided back home to your Lord and my Lord Jesus Christ. Please, Muslims, wake up. We have done so much damage today. We showed you from your most authentic sources today that Muhammad is a nice little mushrik. And we showed you his filth in the Islamic sources. Guys, go with the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May Jesus, our Lord and Savior, protect you, guide you in your lives, bring you happiness, and bless you and your loved ones. Thank you for your amazing support. Deus Vult, we will see each other. Lord willing, we will see each other again very soon in a short video or a future live show. Thank you for being here. God bless.